morning eastern time 11 a.m on wednesday for the day three of the ai groovathon i'm going to be your host for the next six hours and i'm backed up um uh, with the production back there with donna fox simon leung and david lemon in the lobby we have no guests for today um we do have a session today on all things ai images and we also have a little surprise thing from ChatGPT that I promised you guys yesterday that we're going to start the first hour with. And I'm going to explain everything about my thought process behind it. I'm going to share the doc with you. You're going to be able to experiment it with it. It's going to be exciting. <clears throat> um, I will say this. Um, today, depending on where we go, we may end early. Instead of ending at 5 o'clock, we may end as early as 2.30 today, maybe 3 o'clock or four o'clock. The reason is um, <clears throat> we can, I can educate you to the point where you really want to know everything you need to know about using AI images. That's my goal for today. And then to show you some examples. But look, for, for me to be going six hours, if the topic is only, all right, let me show you another video. And then it's basically going to be a you know, a six hour YouTube video of you watching me make images. I want to train you so that you can do it yourself. Having said that, <clears throat> if the conversation goes into different places where I'm hoping it does with some of your Q and A, and you, uh, we get some things where Mike, you showed this the other day, can you break down another example or whatever the case may be, we get a surprise guest or a surprise person from in here where we've got to break something down in chat GPT. I'm all for it, but I just want to let you know the last thing that I want to do is just tr get this, everything you need to know done by 3.15. And then I'm just like, all right, let's let's uh, let's make an image of a goat in the Himalayas. Uh, and let's try to now uh, add a cow in the background. That's gonna get real tedious. We're really here to focus on the education. We have another announcement to make for you. Uh, we did, I'm excited about this one. We did lock down one of the people, we'll share my screen here for a second. <clears throat> One of the people on the, these documents that you have uh, here, okay, and that's this guy right here, Matt Wolf, who I'm very, very, very dear friends with. He's a digital marketer that about five, six months ago transitioned his digital marketing channel to um, artificial intelligence. 
And this guy's a genius when it comes to this stuff, the amount of work he's putting into this. So I'm going to break down some of the some of the stuff that I'm actually learning from him. You're going to we're going to summarize it today. But we got him to be a guest on tomorrow. Uh, he hasn't locked in a time yet. So you don't want to miss tomorrow. I think Matt is the um, the leading educator right now in AI. And it shows it that his channel, he'll tell us, I don't want to make up the stats, but I believe it went from something like um, under 10,000 followers to 120,000 followers in the last 90 days. And, uh, you know, uh, some of his videos, when you look at some of his videos, for instance, this one, 157,000 views, this AI Chrome extension, ex that's, this is where I get some of my information from you. And again, um, we're going to, uh, I've added one more person on here, future tech pilot. So I'm going to share this document with, uh, with Donna to get it into the chat. And there, what was the other thing I wanted to let you know? <clears throat> oh, and yeah, I have another surprise document that I'm going to be giving you. And this is something called prompts, uh, prompts for finding talking points. So let me just share this. Uh, let's see here. We'll just go back to my face for a second. I'm going to share this with everyone. <clears throat> right now it's restricted. So anyone with the link can view. I'm going to copy that document, send it over to Donna. <clears throat> okay. And just, I'm just going to resend this one, Donna, just in case. Um, let's see, share, copy link. Okay. I think that's everything that you're going to need uh, for today uh, to get started. And we'll clean up all this stuff in my browser. All right. And let me find my stream yard. Okay. So I'm back focused. <clears throat> all right. So one of the things uh, that's interesting, the reason why we're three minutes late and somebody said, I even see the gremlins are at it again. Um, Don and I started talking about 10 minutes before the live stream in the lobby. And I said, here's what I'm going over today. And then I started showing her what we're going to start the live stream with, what I was going to, what I'm going to be showing you. And we got so excited about what we were talking about. I looked over thinking we have like five minutes and I was like, oh my God, it's 11.03. She's like, I'm so out of sorts. All right, we got to get started. And we just jumped right in. So uh, so, so we're going to jump in and pick up where we left off yesterday. So yesterday when we were talking with Paul Hoffman, uh, by the way, who wrote, produced and, um, and sung, the song I'm grooving. You could actually hear Paul's voice in there. There's grooving inside of me. You know, you could just hear him oozing out of that song. Uh, I had asked Donna because I got this good idea, but I didn't want to go off on a tangent on Paul's time. And I said, Donna, please remind me to tell you about a great idea that I have for us uh, for a SaaS company for anybody in the chat that wants to run with it. And what we spoke about <clears throat> was what what YouTubers do is they they create what's known as a clips channel, right? So if you watch any podcaster, if you're familiar with any podcaster that streams their podcast on YouTube, um, I probably am familiar with a good 10 or 15, especially comedians. Comedians tend to have good podcasts. Um, but, I, you know, there, there's other, there's news, you know, recapping news and different things like that. And what all of those companies do is they have their main channel where it's long form content, one hour, two hour, three hours. And then they'll usually create a clips channel. The best one, uh, you know, the most famous one is, you know, Joe Rogan, uh, his long form podcast is called JRE Experience or the Joe, the Joe Rogan Experience. He doesn't do it anymore on YouTube because he has an exclusive with Spotify, but let's just forget about that for a second. That would have been one channel. And then what he does <clears throat> is he creates something called JRE Clips, right? So almost every YouTuber has two channels, uh, every podcaster that streams on YouTube has two channels. They have their main long form and then they have their clips channels. And their clips channels are these little micro money machines. And we don't have that at Groove. We always talked about it. I remember Andy Jenkins, the late Andy Jenkins, uh, and I uh, had something, I believe in video Genesis or traffic Genesis. I forget which one. It might've been of a course in Genesis Digital. Andy called it, uh, um, atomizing your your uh, your information. Um, and we, we spoke about whether or not we should call it micro content, atomizing, uh, par you know, particles, because particles are smaller than, than atoms. And it probably wasn't a very, very good name. But basically, the, the point is taking content and repurposing it, right? You've heard about that. Um, 
uh, Felicia Pegish. Uh, maybe we'll have her on tomorrow to, you know, to talk about that um, tomorrow or Friday. And we'll reach out to her. She has a, a great little thing on how to repurpose content. And so you start with um, a video and then you can take that and you can create freemiums, reports, micro clips like we just did, YouTube shorts for Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, all these different things and repurposing content. So that was the thing that, that um, I asked Donna. I said, Donna, if I were to ask you, what, what is the number one reason why we don't repurpose our content? As she was thinking through, she realized, okay, well, first it's grunt work, but that's really not the thing. You can quote unquote, as we both said, forget, for, forgive the expression, you know, grunt work. But grunt work is something that is more, um, um, more monotonous and, you know, it's repetitious. Let's put it that way. Um, it, it's less creative, right? But the thing is, is that if you're going to get somebody to, to go through a three hour and 40 minute live stream, well, a creative person is not really going to want to do that. I mean, even if you pay a creative person their worth, they're going to say, I, 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 you know, I'm, I didn't sign up for life to go through a three hour and 40 minute video twice a day and literally spend my entire day finding talking points. So you have to find a less creative person to, to sit through three hours and 40 minutes, which I'm sure Joe Rogan does. Right. But then that person needs to be able to find a good clip and know that it's a good clip and be able to come up with a good title and description and export it has to be produced. All these different things in what you would call a workflow has to be done. And the, the toughest part about that that, I, that that Donna acknowledged is it's hard to find somebody that knows what a good clip is or knows what a good nugget is or knows what's gonna go viral. So I said, I'm wondering, if with GLASP, G L A S P, if we can create something where we feed ChatGPT a YouTube video, then refer to that, that, that transcript that we put in there as the conversation, and then literally tell it to go find us the nuggets and then give us an output workflow on it. So I worked on it for about an hour yesterday. And we just, I believe we either just shared it with you. We're going to, we're going to share that workflow with you and we're going to jump right in. Uh, and I'm go probably going to fine tune it and I'll continue to fine tune this document. There's two caveats that I want to say. <clears throat> um, we're treating it like it watched the video, but it didn't really watch the video. It processed and analyzed a transcript of the video. Okay. So that's a little bit different because it doesn't know the time stamps. If we just paste a transcript in there, it has to estimate the timestamps and I'm asking it for timestamps. So it may say it's seven minutes and 60 seconds because it's saying based on the average person's uh, you know, uh, speech per minute. But if instead of th seven minutes and 30 seconds, it could be six minutes or it could be nine minutes depending on if you have Ben Shapiro on and that guy talks twice as fast as any human being on earth. Um, he sounds like he's the only person that I'll listen to without putting on 1.5x. Uh, I put him on 0.75x. And the other thing is I'm having one little problem. I'm asking it to tell me when the conversation starts, give me the start text of the conversation. And where the conversation ends, give me the end text of the conversation, just to make it easier for a video editor to know this is exactly the conversation that we're talking about. But other than that, what I'm about to show you is going to blow you away. All right. So let's show my screen and jump right in. All right. So this is what we're going to go over with all of the images. This is my, my workflow for you today. It's going to be, it's going to be exciting. Uh, but uh, let's see. This document looks like it's open twice. We're going to go over this prompt right here. Uh, and boy, did I have to work on this uh, a few times. Let me just shut off my... my, um, what is the name of that? Uh, Grammarly, because, you know, it puts all these ugly things on there and it wants, you know, when I'm doing prompts for ChatGPT, the grammar doesn't always have to be the best and all these weird highlights are just gonna distract us. Okay, so the workflow is this. The very, very first thing that, I, that we do is we go to YouTube and we find a video. And then with our, our extension, so I, I'm not gonna assume that everybody has been on all of the prior, 
live streams for all six hours. So what we're going to do is we're going to Google GLASP. Weird name is G-L-A-S-P. G-L-A-S-P. Chrome extension. Okay. And then you want to make sure that you install that Chrome extension. If you don't know how to install a Chrome extension, then Google or ask ChatGPT how to install a Chrome extension. Once you do have that Chrome uh, extension, let me pull up in another browser my, my, uh, my Tony Robbins video from my history. <clears throat> All right. Let's put this right here. Okay. <clears throat> now, Donna, I have bad news, but it's not the end of the world. Um, either our six-hour live streams are too long for, uh, for, for Glass to say, hey, I want to transcribe it. I'm right? not surprised. Yeah. Yeah. So at, at, at the, at, we might have to break it up into three, two hours, you know, uh, videos and put them up to, to do this type of workflow uh, because it just, it just looks like it's like, Hey, you know, don't ask me to transcribe, you know, that there's a cost to that. And it's, I'm too tired for that. <laughs> so, so uh, let's refresh this. Oh, uh, what was I going to say? So um, yeah. Oh, oh, or it's just too new and you know, the subtitles haven't been generated or whatever it is, but I do think that it has to do with the length. Okay. So I just uh, refreshed this page. I have it on mute here. I'm going to hit pause. Okay. Uh, let's get Tony on there. Tony's just awesome and inspiring just to see, uh, just to see there on stage. All right. So this Chrome extension is pretty awesome. As soon as you hit the drop down key right here, arrow, it instantly transcribes a one hour video just like this. Boom. Instantly. And now this isn't downloading the closed captions. This is using um, artificial intelligence, you know, uh, open AI to actually read everything here. Now, when I click this view AI summary, what happens is it doesn't put the timestamps in. I wish it did, but let's just do this workflow right now. Okay. Excuse me. Little runny nose there. I'm going to, Click on this, and we're gonna, I'm going to show you the example. I already have one made right here, but we're going to walk through it uh, ourselves. Just We're going to make another one right here. So we're going to open. Let me get rid of this so that I don't get confused. And we're going to pop this right into ChatGTP. I haven't done anything other than use a Chrome extension right now. <clears throat> this is what happens. It takes a video, whether it's five minutes or one hour or two hours, whatever the limit is, and... It transcribes it. There's a couple of other interesting things here, Donna, that I find fascinating. Um, this is not the full transcript. Hmm. It, get, it gets cut off right here. But I've so asked it, what is the final talking point? And it still knows. And I think that's because up here, this thing, title, number 544, Tony Robbins, I think giving it this information tells it you might have studied this video in the past. I don't know. but um, Or I don't honestly know how it's getting the rest of the information, but it, it, it does get the full, the full video. I know that it did that because of when we did our replay. Uh, it was able to, to get all the context for the, for the closed captions. Okay. I so, have uh, good news. Yes. In, in the couple of minutes, I went to our YouTube channel, went to our old Groovathon videos, figuring the captions would have been auto-generated by then. Mm -hmm. Glass works. There are transcripts for all of our old groovy state of the, our six hour state of the groovy and videos. It probably have takes transcripts. Yeah. I did the one from Monday. It didn't work. So I was like, yeah. well, it didn't work for 48 hours. Wow. So maybe cool. at some point it starts to work because it's there on our old ones. <sighs> all right. So maybe, maybe we'll just go try that in just a minute. Yeah. There's one more prompt that I need to do in here at the end and we might just do it later, but, uh, but right now it doesn't matter. And that's to, to give me more. It's not giving me enough of them. Um, and you could also rerun it because it gets different prompts every time you rerun it. Okay. So someone let's also said in our group yesterday, I'm sorry, Mike. Uh, someone said in our group yesterday that ChatGPT has a 3,000 word memory limit. It only it, considers. It, it told me 5,000, but I don't think it knows its own limit. Because, yeah, maybe. Because wa watch this. 
I, I have a conversation where you'll see me talking with it, but I said, do you have a limit to how many characters I can put into a prompt? It tells, tells me no. See, I don't have a specific limit. Limit. Ask I it said, how I, far back in the conversation it can refer to. It can, it can, how much of our conversation do you retain or something? I don't know how to ask it, but you, you kind of. All right. And then the other thing is then when I did put a lot of information, it said I have a 5,000 word limit. Uh, and so then, so then I had to break everything into 5,000. <clears throat> See, I don't have a, a limit. Interesting. So, so here, here's what, what I think is happening. It actually doesn't have a limit. I'm asking chat GPT, like what is open AI's limit? Um, and I don't know if it knows that I'm referring to chat GPT. Maybe I should mm. ask chat. Chat GPT was programmed with a limit. So let's just delete this and let's go through my, my prompt here. Okay. So the first thing that I do is this is, uh, uh, I should probably put some line breaks where I paste because I don't paste the uh, entire thing. So this would be a new paste. So I say, okay, from now on, when I refer to the conversation, it is about the conversation you just analyzed. Can we continue? So let's do that. Let's see what happens. And it's going to just give me a, yes, we can continue. Okay. Yes, of course we can continue. Okay. So now the next thing that I say to it is I train it on who you are. You're an expert content creator, YouTuber, educator, teacher, video editor, and marketer. Your specialty and understand why I put the word specialty here in brackets. It's because your specialty is going through the entire, the conversation. I know that's not proper English, but I, I have to refer to it as the conversation. So you're going through the entire, the conversation and finding nuggets. And once I trained it on what its specialty is, there'll be no confusion later when I start saying to it, your specialty can also be blah, 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 blah. So we're going to put this in here. <clears throat> hey, Mike, I don't know if there's an official name for stuff that's in brackets like you're using it. Do you know if there is? Um, no, this is, um, I, I would call it a data set. Honestly, yeah, I right would now. too. Or, like short codes is set. what I would yeah. call it. I would short call code, it a short code. Better. I like and that. I feel yeah. like we should build that in to Groove.ai is the ability to create short codes and maybe have an interface where people have defined their short codes and they can easily dump mm -hmm. them into a continued Please chatter project. That. That, that's great. So that you can literally create a short code, code for a paragraph of instructions. Yeah. So we could take this entire paragraph right here and call it, you know, clip sorting. So yep. please clip sort this, this, uh, this conversation. Yeah. Oh, and I if, like if we do a couple things that are a lot, you know, frequent, then uh, we don't have to keep redefining things um, across projects because we could have account related short codes created. Yeah. This is, this is good stuff. So I'm going to uh, just put in my next prompt here, telling it that you're an expert. Thank you for the kind words. Okay. Please tell, let me know, is there anything specific you would like me to do regarding analyzing the video? Prompt engineering. We're getting this thing to like, I didn't even tell it I wanted to do anything, but it's starting to realize I'm getting the hint that you want me to do something because you're using things like specialty and the conversation. This is fantastic. So the next thing is, um, <clears throat> We want to go right to here. <clears throat> this is another prompt input. Okay. So I'm going to just say, these are the, let's read this. So now just like Joe Rogan has a video podcast, his team goes through and finds his best clips and makes short 10 minute videos when hot topic starts and stops. These clips can be three minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. The point is it, the point is it is when, Let's just get rid of this extra stuff. The point is when a hot topic starts to stop, you are looking for topics that would work to get maximum views on YouTube, either because of the topic, the virality of the topic, or it's newsworthy, 
contra uh, controversial or educational. Or it has to do with, so we don't need, uh, yeah, or it has to do with pop culture. But let's say it was a marketing video, live stream, or podcast. Well, in that case, you would be looking for educational nuggets, anecdotes, or anecdotes of stories. We will refer to these as clips. Your specialty, which we already defined, can also be the same for shorts. Okay. Um, and then later, we will refer to these as shorts. Okay. Or short would be a one minute clip on average, et cetera. And we're basically explaining you know, what a one minute, minute short is, but the, we're really focusing on something that will go viral there. We will refer to these as shorts. Does this make sense? Can I give you a task? And believe it or not, I learned this, does this make sense from, talk, uh, from watching a YouTuber? Because it will, it will, if you give it a prompt, it will, won't tell you that it doesn't make sense. It'll just try to interpret it. If, it. if it's not clear on something, it will tell you, I am not clear. Can you give me more information? But the beautiful thing is when we say this, the reason why we're putting here, does this make sense? Can I give you a task? If I leave out, can I give you a task? It thinks it was given a prompt and it starts processing things. I don't want it to process. So I'm saying, can I give you a task? <clears throat> Boom. That's it. We have primed this thing to now do this. This is exciting stuff that you're about to see. Oh, we're going to do one more silly little thing. Okay. Again, the reason why I have to put this in, do you recall the conversation? Okay, um, I have to do this. And it's going to be like, yeah, dude, I remember the conversation. Get to the friggin' point. And that's it, right? But the reason, if I don't do that, I've noticed that it just makes up a fake conversation about different people. I'm like, what, what is going on? And that's what Donna was saying, is sometimes there's so much going on in a linear thread, you have to be like, hey, just to remind you, this is about you know what we're doing here. This is linear. And it's like, yes, yes, I get it. Okay, so now I can do this. I can say, um, <clears throat> now this is actually not um, one of these like types of things here. This, this, it, these lines actually go into the prompt itself. So the prompts don't start there. So I'm going to have to clean that up uh, for you guys to make that a little bit easier. So let me just put asterisks here <clears throat> so that we don't make this look like it's different prompts because we're teaching ourselves that the dashes mean different prompts. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take <clears throat> this entire thing here from here down to the end, and I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to paste it. But there's one thing that has to be done. I have to go right into the top here where it says paste the summary because, again, if I don't do this, it just starts making things up. I wanted to remember. So here's the task. In the conversation above that you just summarized with, you know, this summary, I want you to do the following. So I got to go all the way back to the, the summary, and I want to take this right here, and I pay, put that right here saying, uh, remember this summary. And this is what we're telling it to do. <clears throat> I want you to do the following sections of the conversation that are worthy of being clips and shorts based on your specialty. Then I want you to state whether you found a short or a clip. Then I want you to give the start and stop timestamps. Then I want you to give the start text sentence and stop text sentence. Let's put, go like this here. OK. Important rule. Th 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 let me just tell you this. This right here is I still haven't been able to get this right. It doesn't give me the exact transcript of the start and stop uh, sentence. It gives me a summary of it. And I've even said down here as well. Again, very important. If you give me start and stop text in the output, it, I should be able to find the exact text in the conversation verbatim in the, uh, that was in the first prompt I should put. So when you output this, it must be the exact conversation. I'm going to just put that, clean that up a little bit there. Okay. And then what was the other one that I just, uh, oh, I just, I, I like that I just put this, um, this in, put a little space there just for clarity there. Okay, that would be this section right here. 
should have a space. Yeah. Okay. So I then tell it, then I want you to come up with a title for this topic that can be used um, as, as a YouTube title or social media title that will get the most clicks. So I'm going to have to fix that. Okay. Then I want you to come up with a description that can be used in the video. Then I want you to come up with keywords that can be used for SEO in the video on YouTube or other social media. Then I want you to suggest what the thumbnail design should look like and what text should go on the thumbnail to get the most clicks. Then I want you to give me a one paragraph reason as to why you chose this clip or short. Then I want you to categorize it as no more than two of these virility, newsworthy, controversial, educational, pop culture, or humor. Then if it is a short, I want you to provide the entire transcript verbatim of the short selected. Here's an example output. I want it to look like this clip from this time to this time, the start text and text John Doe gets his first kiss in this video. I just made all of this stuff up thumbnail, funny kiss, blah, 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 blah. And let's do it. Now there was one more thing that I just, um, uh, what was it? Let me just see here. So I just copied Then I want you to, okay. I think it was the word and right here. Uh, there was something where I, I had as instead of end, and I just want to fix that in here as well. Do you remember where that was, folks? Uh, oh, it was right here. Then I want you to come up with a topic. That should be as. Okay, so now this matches the document that we just edited. <laughs> All right, so let's see the magic happen. Ready? Go. <clears throat> Understood. I'll get started. I found a short. What is a short? About a one minute clip. This one's really small. And it says, fear is physical. That's the start text. Ends with, that's why repetition is the mother of skill. Title, the science behind fear. Description. In this short clip, Tony Robbins explains the physical effects of fear and why repetition is crucial to overcoming it. Keywords to use for the video. Tony Robbins, fear, repetition, overcoming fear. Thumbnail design, an image of a person's brain with the word fear highlighted in red with a red line going through down the body where the word repetition is highlighted in green. Interesting. Thumbnail text, the science of fear and repetition. Reason, I chose this clip because fear is something that everyone experiences. And understanding the physical effects of fear and how to overcome it is, val uh, is valuable information. The clip can be educational, and also has the potential to go viral. Category, educational. Now, one mistake it did, it didn't follow the instructions. It, it was supposed to give me uh, the exact transcript if it's a short. I wanted to see that. Here it found a clip. It says, and this is kind of short here uh, to be a clip, but it says you want to change your life, change your story. That's a great start, right? Because stories have the power to control lives. That's where it ends. What is this one called? The power of storytelling. Description. In this clip, Tony Robbins talks about the power of storytelling. So this is what we put in our YouTube video. These would be the, the keywords we would use. Our thumbnail design. The text that we put over the thumbnail. Why did you choose this? I chose this clip because storytelling is a powerful tool, etc., etc. Category, educational, newsworthy. I don't know about newsworthy. Uh, here it found a clip. Okay. Um, this one is the most important decision you make. You're going to do what you're going to focus on. Interesting. The importance of focus. So guys, you see what's what's going on here? It's it's basically creating something where you could go and find these different things. And the other thing is you could re-roll it and do it again. Um, let's see. Let's just do this. Can you find any more clips or shorts? And I'm just curious if it gives me a stupid answer like, yes, I can, or if it literally, uh, let's just tell, if so, um, continue in this format. Look at that. <laughs> and so you don't have to use them all. It's basically saying these are some suggestions for the team. And guys, now you have a workflow. We're going to build this into Groove.ai. Um, but I mean, look at this. This is some pretty ridiculous stuff. 
And so let's see what you guys are saying here. Uh, Leslie says, OMG. To give ChatGPT all of those target prompts and then it spits out the whole thing, uh, spit, spits the whole thing out packaged, mind blowing. I agree. And um, somebody without their name says, that's awesome. So uh, Donna, let's try it with uh, Groove Growth. You did this three days ago with Ridgely. You're going to tell me if, uh, if it's accurate or if it's making stuff up here. This is All exciting. Right? Yeah. So we're going to go to um, Groove.cm. I'm going to click on live. That's us right now. We're probably uh, where it was. And so this is you guys five days ago, right? Yes. You streamed for... Why, why doesn't it say that how it's long? But we'll see hour. when it loads. Yeah, 52 minutes. <clears throat> okay, ready? Transcribe. Boom. Move it to chat GPT and let's start this thing. I love that button. <laughs> <laughs> I know. it's. I stopped watching a lot of videos because the educational stuff I want, I just really want the summary. I want to, you know, like I'll make an example. I want to know what has a better camera, the, the conclusion, the Samsung or the iPhone, right? And... And I don't want to watch your 10 minute video so you could get ads. All right. When so you let's click that button, this. is it bringing over the timestamps or just no. the content? Do you know? No. no. Yeah. For, yeah. For, for some reason, it doesn't bring over the timestamps, but you can do this. You can do this. They have a copy button, but I'm just going to open up a new chat GPT. If I just paste the whole thing, it's going to give me that little yellow error that it's too much. See? Ah. So I'm not really sure. What in the world is going on uh, there? So let's uh, let's go over to here. We are going because it does give you conclusions, even when it doesn't have it there. It'll say in conclusion, the YouTuber summarizes that, and I'm like, okay, that's that just ended right here. So I think there's something going on with this. I think this type the, the 544 is always used. So I think. So what we're going to hey, do Mike, is we're gonna... um, the yes. 544 is from your notifications on YouTube. If you click on the notifications, it will disappear. It's basically taking the, the tab oh. title. Yeah. Oh. What, so it doesn't what, have anything to, to do with it. Yeah. If I you click next to your avatar, that bell icon and the It says nine plus. It really mm. means 544. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Now they're gone. And now it doesn't have any more in the tab. So it won't show up anymore. It makes no sense. We're thinking it's some sort of secret code, and David, yeah, yeah. A very obvious <laughs> yeah. answer. Yeah, that, that code means go back in your database and find. Yeah, nope. <laughs> All right, thank you, David. <laughs> All right, so we're going to jump in now, and we're we're, we're not going to talk about what we're doing. We're just going to grunt. Prompt one, boom. Prompt two, boom. Donna's going to say, "Mike, I'm sorry to tell you." It made this all up. <laughs> we didn't talk about this. Um, or it's gonna, she's going to say, uh, actually, this is pretty much an accurate time of when we discuss these different things. Oops. I hit control V by accident. Uh oh, don't do that. And I hit control Z. All right. And here we go. <clears throat> Let me just get rid of all this extra text here. And I'm also just going to format this page um, as pageless because that's the way we do things from now on. Nobody's really printing pages. All right, so here's our final instructions. Now, we can't just hit paste. Remember, if you get a little thing breaking, that's because you forgot this little step here. We have to go up and we have to find the summary. Did you guys talk about Napoleon Hill and Jim Collins? We did. Okay, so let's see. So we know that it 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 it, um, it did a proper summary, but let's see if this is finding nuggets that you deem worthy. Here we go. <laughs> All right, let's just let it go through so we, our eyes don't go crazy. crazy do you think they slow Donna, down you, the output 
Um, well, if for chat GTP, chat GPT plus, you're supposed to get faster output. Yeah. Um, that you're paying for it. So if it, it is slow, it need I... to be this slow. It makes me wonder if it's like, um, <clears throat> you know, the story about how they added an egg to a box cake so that people felt like they were really baking. If they had oh, yeah, yeah, an yeah. egg, if it was, a, yeah. it was just to add water, it didn't feel like baking. Yeah. So home cooks didn't like it. It makes me wonder if adding that way that you can see it typing makes you think <clears throat> that the software is working. Are you more satisfied because you feel like it's working for you? Oh, yeah. Um, I, hey, if I'm paying for that, get take the egg out of the box I have in the fridge. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> All right, Donna, you let me know here. It's saying somewhere about five to seven minutes in, it found a clip where you guys are discussing something about people fall into things without proper examination. So it's really important to align with what you want. So the title is why examining your data is critical for your business success. Did you guys talk about something like that? No, what we were talking, well, sort of, but not exactly. We were talking about how, when you're not e examining your life, <clears throat> you sometimes um, get led astray and wind up doing things that aren't really on your purpose or in your value system. How about this? In this clip, speaker one and speaker two discuss the importance of examining data before diving into something new. They highlight the dangers of falling into things without proper examination and emphasize the importance of aligning with one's business goals. That is correct. <laughs> Other than I feel like the word data is misleading, but uh, right, and that's it what makes I mean. Sound like here. it's analyzing numbers, and really, it's yeah. That's what yeah. I mean. It, it, it's it's summarizing, and I'm trying to tell it to be concrete. Um, all right, let's try another one. Um, the first thing is gratitude is text. Bring people around you that make you better. The description is in this clip, you guys talk about the importance of gratitude and surrounding oneself with great people. You discuss how gratitude can help shift one's perspective and lead to a more positive outlook on life. You also emphasize the value of surrounding oneself with people who make you better. Did you guys talk about that? Yeah. Yes. Wow. All right, here's a short, might be harder because it's not as much context. Um, but you, if you're two, or Ridgely was two, entrepreneurship is hard and it's always going to be hard, but it's also rewarding. Remember, this is a summary. And then it would end, uh, oh, it doesn't even give me a stop or start. <clears throat> okay, um, the description in this short clip, speaker two, likely you, Donna, shares a powerful message about the rewards and challenges of entrepreneurship. Um, let, Potentially, let's see. yeah. Yeah, let, well, see, this is what it's supposed to do, but let me, let me do this. Give me the full transcript of this short. from in your last output above. Hmm. All right, this is, let's see if this sounds like you and Ridgely uh, in, in this short. Let's just let it finish here. You can't just have a goal without the process, right? And you can't have a process without the goal. So they go hand in hand, right? It's got to be like this, delegate balance between the two. And I think when you do have that balance, that's when you see the most success. Yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting because, you know, there it's, it's, it looks like a transcript, right? Uh -huh. There's so many, but this thing can fool you. That's the thing. So I really want to know if Donna kind of remembers. There's so many people that I've talked to, you know, well, they'll say, I have a goal and I want to make a million dollars. But when you ask them what the process is, they don't really have a solid answer. And it's like, well, how are you going to get there if you don't have a process? Exactly. Yeah. It's just not enough to say you want. You have to have a plan to actually get there. Right. And that's where the examination comes in. Examining what you're doing, examining your process, examining your goals, making sure they're all in alignment. I'm curious. Did it make that up? Is it a summary or does that ring a bell? It is plausible. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so generic where it's not taking like something that I particularly say all the time. So I can't say, oh yeah, I make I say that phrase. You uh, know, we, but we it's we, talking we, about process and achieving <clears throat> goals, and that sounds like me. We can do this. I can take this, 
I can open up a Google Doc. Oh, that's right. We can search for it. Yeah, I can just hit paste. And why don't you just go can... on to that timestamp and yeah. in the video and basically just play it? Could do that too. Because these timestamps aren't real. That's what I was saying at the beginning. Is it's estimating timestamps because it didn't. It doesn't. It does. It only has text, so it can only estimate based on how fast people speak that it would be there. But I'm just going to take this right here, not just enough to say what you want, okay, without even a period. All right, and I'm going to see if I click Control F and paste. No, how about just the words what you want? Okay. Curious learning strategy and start to what you want to do is going to change. Uh, what, how long is this video? And this, this is saying, like what David said, we can see at least if uh, uh, that'd be hard to find. It's about yeah. an hour long video. So about a third of the way in. Yeah. Let me, let me see how many times the word process is in there. Okay, only one of two. So I could find that. That's two thirds down. This is this one. Um, but to, uh, getting clunky is everything. Okay. Everything really is part of the examination process. Nobody always wanted to use them. So it, it's not doing a full transcription. So, uh, guys, this is something that I did, uh, late last night. Um, it seems to be in this summary mode where because of this, and I think this is the problem. I think the very, very first prompt is putting this in there, video summary. And so mm -hmm. it's summarizing and I think it's got it down. And, and that's why Donna's like, yeah, I mean, it's plausible. We did, we spoke about this, but it's it doesn't seem to be exactly. So the bottom line is we're not relying on this for a transcript. We're relying on it to be able to go in and find- um, Ideas really. Uh, yeah, uh, places to go yeah. and export clips. That's essentially what it is. And if we can export that clip, we're getting a description, we're getting a title, all that doesn't matter. The fact that it's not giving, the only reason we wanted to start an end text was so that we could go find it easier. Um, but even when editing the video, you're not gonna be able to find it that way with search and replace. Well, maybe in Descript you could, right? Yeah, if you uploaded this into Descript, you literally would. So folks, that was a little treat for you. You all have access to this. Select all, copy and paste, play around with it yourself, see what you can come up with. Uh, and I think, I think this is pretty cool, but what I can, what I can tell you first, oh, you know what, let, let, Donna, let's just have one more fun. We got a little bit of time. So let's go in. You told me that, um, do you have a URL you can just paste to me? Oh yeah, I can. I have one, it's still <clears throat> open here. So let me grab that. There you go. Drop it in your Skype. All right, let's see what happens with a video um, that is six hours, but I don't know that it's going to do a six hour transcript. You said it did? Yeah. Oh my God. Jesus Christmas. Yeah, that's going to scroll forever. We're only at 29 minutes it of a six hour video. All right. I, I was just happens. about to say, no, I didn't <laughs> confirm that it did all six hours, but I could tell from the scrub bar on the right, which you can't really grab onto. I don't even see it on yours. Yeah, it's um, not on mine. Yeah, because, probably because my screen is blown in. All right, let, yeah. let's just do this. I could let's tell see. it did all six hours. Uh, Mike, just FYI, the YouTube transcript that you're actually previewing, it's from oh. YouTube. It's not from Glasp. It's actually taking the oh. closed captions from YouTube. So most of the text is just auto-generated by YouTube and it's not really correct. Is that where the glass oh. captions come from? Yeah, for all glass videos? just takes the closed captions from YouTube. If you open a YouTube video that does not have closed captions, it doesn't give you anything. God. Oh, oh okay. And I, the closed I, I, captions I, are notoriously terrible in YouTube. Yep. Yeah, I honestly yeah. thought that that it wasn't that they were, but so if no. they're just downing the the closed captions, and yeah. I must have misread it somewhere when it says how it does it. Uh, but okay, so it's a great way to to you know, get the captions at least. But for the most part, ChatGPT is gonna be able to get a decent enough context from it for, for these purposes. Um, but you see, it just, it just ends in the middle here. Uh, so let's see what happens here. 
We're going to just do that same exercise one more time. We'll close that video out. I don't need this paste video here. So one. Okay. Two. All right. Three. Guys, isn't this like watching a master chef at work? <laughs> All right, four. Saying, hey, don't go off on your own here. It's the same conversation we just spoke about. And, like, give right. me something to Fine. do, man. Stop, <laughs> <Yeah>. stop talking. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, look, I'm not, you know, I'm chat GPT, MF. All right, so we're going <laughs> to grab that summary. And we're going to paste this in. Uh, and honestly, I don't, I don't know um, which live stream this was. I could probably go back and try to remember. <clears> oh, <throat> uh, look at this. We're talking about Groove.cm. This is a platform for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs. We've had people who have had been with us for years, and they're not leaving us anytime soon. A platform for entrepreneurs. In this clip, the Groove team talks to you. Yeah, wow. It knows there's four people here somehow. It's yeah, this is one of the early team. ones. We were in the studio. Yeah. How does it know there's a Groove team there? Um, Interesting. Maybe they're hearing, it, it's analyzing, it's saying, John, Mike, Joe, Matt, and say, they're hearing a lot of names. In this clip, the Groove team talks about their platform being designed for entrepreneurs and how it has helped people for years. They discuss the benefits of using Groove and why people should consider it as the go-to platform for customer support and marketing. All right. Um, educational pop culture. Uh, here's a short. One thing I'm really excited about is the upcoming keynote. Yeah, me too. We've got some great keynote speakers lined up and some really cool topics. Uh, in this short, the group team discusses their upcoming keynote and why they're excited about it. This probably wouldn't be a very good short, to be honest. <laughs> it's a terrible short. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. Um, here's a clip. So one of the things that we want to do is put together a video montage. Um, of look at this of getting Groove users testimonials, hmm. and it, again, this isn't great content, uh, honestly. Uh, but look, we were just talking about Groove, we're hyping Groove, so it's tough to make good content out of it. In this clip, the Groove team discusses their plan to create a video montage of how their platform, is, which we actually went and did. They talk about the power of user testimonials and how it could be great a great way um, to market the platform. And here's a short. So here's the thing. You're going to have to say, give me more, give me more, give me more. One of the prompts that I didn't put out, I, I probably need to do a prompt that says, um, get me three clips for every 60 minutes, right? I, didn't, I didn't, didn't give it the number of clips that I want. And I would like it to put out at least three clips for every 60 minutes and shorts related to that. Um, why did it pick, pick this one? The clip highlights the importance of user testimonials. And this is, this is its own hypothesis right here. Um, to use testimonials and how they can be used for effective marketing. It's educational and has a touch of virility as people are interested in hearing about how our product has helped others. And then here's a short. We've been getting a lot of engagement on social media lately. lately it ends with that's great to hear. Uh, yeah, it's really encouraging to see our followers grow. All right. So I don't know if that actually has the full video uh, in there, let, let me just, well, I closed that video, didn't I? Yeah, I was going to put the, I was going to do a little search to see if we actually spoke about user testimonials. Uh, I'm going to just do that real quick. And then we're going to take nice. a break and then get started with the images. I also have Felicia Pagesh uh, confirmed <laughs> for tomorrow. She's going to come oh, on really? and talk about content repurposing you, for the team tomorrow. Sure. All right. And if she wants to come on today, today would be an actually a good day, but you know, that's a little tough for her, but, but I'll if you want to just see, yeah. Say, say Mike, Mike, uh, Mike's happy to have you uh, tomorrow. Is there any chance you can make it today? Because, because we like, like I said at the beginning images, you know, to, for me to be taking the next five hours just to show you image prompting can get a little dull and boring. Uh, all right. So I wanted to create a new document. <clears throat> We're pasting all that in and let's just see. If we have testimonials, okay, uh, one of one. 
it would be really good if I can just pull that out. Lost opportunity for better or over. Like that looks like. Let me add a test. So there's only one mention of testimonials in all of this. Yeah. Anyway, I'll have to play around with this. Um, and you can also play around with it with some of your videos that you know that, hey, I just did a 10 minute video. I, I'm positive I know exactly what this is all about. Um, I could probably even do that with like our, you know, our commercial videos or, or you know, our, our, my case study video, which I put on YouTube. Uh, and then I would know exactly if I said those things. But we're not going to do that now because uh, we could all experiment with this. And I got my Skype in front of my face here, so I'm not seeing anything. All right. So what we're going to do um, is we're going to take a short uh, three minute break. And I do want to uh, let you know what time happy hour is going to be today. So you can prepare for it. Happy hour is going to be at happy hour. You're going to have to stay tuned. We're going to, we're going to have happy hour coming up in the next couple of hours. If you don't know what happy hour is, we'll let you know more about it when we get back. Uh, but let's take a three minute break and we're going to get back and start talking about the topic of the day, image prompting, and it's exactly noon. We'll see you in a few minutes. Hey there, it's Mike Philsames AI Avatar. Thanks for tuning in to our Groovathon. We hope you're enjoying all of the great AI content we're serving up for you. But before we get back to the show, we've got a quick message about Groove.ai. Have you noticed that AI is becoming like streaming platforms? Remember when cutting the cord with cable companies was all the rage? Well, now there are a dozen streaming services and the cost can add up quickly. The same is happening with AI. Yes, there are great platforms out there, but the cost can be as high as $4,000 a month or more. That's why we created Groove.ai as a backup project. It's going to provide you with the best AI solutions at a fraction of the cost, and it's coming just later this year. And with our limited lifetime deal, You'll have lifetime access to all of the top features of Groove.ai when it's released. And right now you can get that for just one payment of $897 or two payments of $497. And with our wholesale pricing on AI, you'll save up to eight times what the other leading brands are charging. But we don't just save you money. We also offer the benefits of a marketplace. That's right. We're making a marketplace for other AI developers to create cool apps for you. Don't find the task or workflow for your needs. There's going to be a marketplace where others are extending our platform with powerful AI tools. Just like how iOS, Android, WordPress, Google Chrome, and Shopify are better because of their marketplace that extends the values of their technology. Soon, when Groove.ai is released, you will have access to a full suite of AI tools, including content creation, copywriting, image creation, and so much more. This will allow you to streamline your content creation and get even better results for your business. What makes Groove.ai different? Well, number one, we give you wholesale pricing on AI, and we don't lock you into one technology like OpenAI. You'll be getting OpenAI, Google's powerful AI engine, Stable Diffusion, everyone out there you'll be able to connect to. The other platforms are built on just one technology. And our lifetime deal you'll never have to worry about monthly payments again. And here's something special for all paid or lifetime Groove.cm customers who back our project before we close. Those customers get a massive bonus of 3.5 million words of free AI content. That's the equivalent of getting 3,500 free emails with 1,000 words each. That's right. That will allow you to create one 1,000 word email every single day for a decade. So don't miss out on this incredible bonus. Act fast and become a backer of Groove.ai before midnight. So don't wait too long. This lifetime deal is only available for a limited time. Once the backup project is complete and Groove.ai is released, the lifetime deal will be gone forever. After that, it will cost $99 a month or $9.97 a year. So if you want to take advantage of this incredible opportunity and save big on your AI needs, become a backer of Groove.ai before it's too late. Don't wait. Join the over 500 backers already in this Groove.ai community. As a backer, be the first to experience the power of AI when it's released later this year. Now, let's get back to the AI Week Groovathon with the real Mike Phil Same. Now get ready for the power power of Groove AI, become a backer of Groove today. I just love that song. I mean, you might actually catch me singing at one point. Uh, so some of you guys were talking about, um, so a YouTube transcribe is not good. Should we use another tool for transcribing? And then tr if you're talking about content, uh, anal anal analyzing content for chat GPT, do not worry. Glasp extension, YouTube, um, 
closed captions are perfect for context. How good are YouTube, uh, YouTube, YouTube transcript? I would say 98 to 99%. Good. It's going to get words wrong like you see here. Groove.cm, it missed the E, you know, for whatever reason. But you can, you know, when I talk, I use a lot of us and uh. And so you can actually see it's actually even putting that in. So here's this transcript. Oh, we're on everybody. Welcome to the uh, second annual Groovathon. We're going to be going uh, for two straight weeks, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to any given time, 2 p.m., 3 p.m., or 6 p.m. Uh, today. And I'm doing us on purpose, guys. Today, I'm joined with John Cornetto, right? So it missed that. Uh, over here on the far right, co-founder of Groove. And on the right here, um, on my close right, is our great, awesome partner and co-founder, Matt Seralta. Spelt Matt's name wrong. Joe Jablonski got spelt wrong. But for the most part, like, look, even Groovester, Mike Jones, all these different things, Donna looked, uh, was popping in there as well. But uh, guys, I'm telling you. Oh, and look at this. We were wondering... What, did we talk about keynotes? Yeah, we did that day. We're going to be doing uh, keynotes for the entire brand, a keynote each day for each app. And remember it said that the, the Groove team was excited about keynotes. So, hey, that was actually a clip that was put in there. Um, me saying um, in real life, I think these transcripts are spot on, like 98, 99%. And so the point is, again, for the question that was just on the screen, so are these no good? It depends what you're looking to do. If you wanna be able to say, I'm turning a video into a report and you think that you can copy this and paste it into the report and not proofread it, no, it is not good. This is not generated by a human. You're gonna to need to go through it the same way we had to do for our commercial that you just saw where it's transcribed, AI transcribed it. And Simon Leung said, I have to go through all of these uh, transcripts to make sure um, this is slightly confusing. So let me close that down. Uh, so Simon went through and fixed sometimes groove pages will be group pages. And then there's the worst one uh, with groove pages where Donna's laughing because she remembered the transcript actually said groove pay jizz, J I Z Z. Uh, and, you know, and so certainly you can't just take things and just pop it in without reading it, especially leaving it up to AI. It's, you know, it's, it's interpretation. So, all right. So that is it. That is it for uh, chat GPT today. Uh, let me shut that comment off. And we are going to get into AI images. So we have two days of content and, and uh, prompt engineering in ChatGPT. Now we're going to get into, um, into images. Um, why are images important? Well, I'm not going to tell you that they're as important as, uh, you know, content, right? Why? Because we've never really suffered for images there's royalty-free image platforms out there where we've suffered. I don't even want to say that we've ever suffered with images. We've compromised, right? You're looking for, if I can get a person, two people facing each other, doing a yoga pose on the top of a mountain at sunset, um, you know, at, um, at the golden hour, that's my exact image. You go look for that. You're not going to get it, whatever you say. And you just go on and you build your page. So this is about taking your marketing to the, to the next level, taking your Canva images to the next level, taking your book report images to the next level. And so my job here today, I may likely fail, is to convert Donna to seeing that we might, she just put up, what? 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 My name is to convert Donna to see if by the time we're done today, if she says, you know, Mike, I think you've might've shown me something where if we teach that to somebody on the team, I would approve that in a workflow where they could take that particular image and use it in Canva. Uh, but right now, Donna, Donna's feeling is, if we're gonna do YouTube thumbnails or anything, I don't wanna break the brand and we're, we're not changing our workflow. We're using our exact workflow in Canva. Is that about right, Donna? Uh, your little voice offline. Do I have that right? You absolutely have it right. I, I do not trust image generation right now at this at this moment. So I'm 
I, I'm, I'm gonna, I have, I have to convert me. you. And I, and, and look, at the end of the day, I'm not going to be insulted if you go not impressed. Uh, it's, it's too much work for the workflow. It's going to slow things down. But my thing is to just to get you at least to say, I can see there's going to be a time I need something very specific and we can't find it, at least if I could get that and where I show you enough confidence in the image. And number two, um, th let's just have a little conversation on this. So let's podcast this up a little bit. I've got some <laughs> I've got a little time to fill. So stay on camera if you don't mind, Donna. Sure. Let's talk about about the lawsuit, not the lawsuit the premise of the lawsuit that's going on right now with Getty Images and uh, a class action lawsuit against Stability.ai, uh, which is Stable Diffusion and other companies um, that have basically, tell me if I got this right, um, basically what's happened is the way that the neural networks have worked for the words is we've taken all the world's content and we've put it in and we've trained the neural network. Mm -hmm. And not too many people are going in and typing something in and going, that's, that's my description of how to lose weight, right? right? Nobody's really freaking out that way. They're kind of, I've seen a couple of copywriters go for their specific product that they created. He's like, hey, I'm the copywriter for this supplement. And he goes, I wrote that. He goes, mm. but look, I don't care. It's only helping me, you know, write it better. So when it comes to images, what's happening is you're taking a style of an artist that is so unique to that artist that they've crafted for 20 years painstakingly and they get paid enormously for their work that they've earned over the years and never has there been the ability for you to say, I want something in the style of that person that if that person did 10,000 images in their career and you stuck that in there and you told them, find the image that you didn't create, likely they would believe that they created the image. So when you're talking about something that is, that is literally replacing that artist, and you could always talk about the, the, you know, the value of original work, but these people are not happy about this. They feel that their, their intellectual property has been stolen. Uh, and so Donna, I want to, I want to know your thoughts on it because you're an artist. Yeah. That's your, your passion and hobby. So I, I, this is a, this is a huge topic. I have, I have lots to say. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm in the camp of, I'm not afraid of AI taking jobs. I think that, uh, AI is a tool and the same as the computer changed the way that we calculate, uh, accounting books, AI changes the way we create uh, electronic media. So, so I'm not in the camp of, oh my gosh, my job is going away. Um, and I don't even think I would be if my job were in fact creating art, um, because I recognize it as a tool. Uh, I don't feel like AI art is, um, has the soul that human created art is. It does. At the moment, I can very much tell the difference when I see something, whether or not it's AI generated or generated by a human. Um, I think that that will get better over time. But right now I can definitely tell, and not just because of extra, uh, the infamous extra fingers on hands or weird arms or um, distortion, but it, it lacks the, the passion element and you can definitely see it. So that's why I'm very I'm not, interested to see if you can so change. I, I've, I've got to convert you. That. I've got to convert you. In fact, yeah. Donna, I might even ask you to say, you know, to, to give me a prompt that yep. like would, so, Hey, I'm looking for this. Let's see if I, if, if uh, you know, as opposed to me, you know, which I probably will with an example, create a lion, you know, uh, at, at the, the glowing hour. So, so yeah. So, uh, and, and Donna, so do, do you think that you have uh, any unconscious bias uh, towards uh, the the artist community winning that might be uh, pushing you away from experimenting with AI images? Um, no, Th that's that's a good question. I don't think so. I think uh, it's because when I'm what my creative output doesn't happen through AI. Mm -hmm. So I'm not trying to create I don't have an urge to go create AI image. I have an urge to create natural images with my hands. So I, I do think that that's, it's just, I don't have the desire to yeah, create I, AI images. I believe that you create art for the love of creating art. Yes. You don't create art for uh, the purpose. I don't want of, the end product. Yeah. yeah. It's not, it's it, not, it's about the process and not the product. That's, that's, a, that's exactly right. Right. Um, so, so, so for, how do I feel so, about the lawsuits? Yeah. 
uh, as a business owner that pays a, a, a lot of money to create intellectual property rights in our trademarks and our brands, uh, I also think that in order to keep intellectual property rights, you have to defend them. And because without defending them, you, you lose your right. You actually give it away. You give your power away to people by not defending your intellectual property rights. Yeah. So uh, as a business owner that recognizes that our intellectual property is valuable, it's important to defend it. Um, I am surprised. I, I am not surprised that Getty Images brought the the oh, charge, led the charge. Yeah, yeah, Getty yeah, Images has been suing online chases. marketers for years and years. They're and ambulance years. chases. Yeah, they are absolutely ambulance. They chases. actually stage scenes so that people can get hit by cars, so they could chase ambulances. Like I, I look at them as that egregious. They are like, very they much deliberately like put images out there so that they could see. That's their business model: is, is yes. cease and desist. Yeah, I yes. hate that. They, they are not nice people, the Getty Images Company. Yeah. Uh, however, Many people have dealt with them. I, I really thought it was going to be Disney that did it first because there was a movement in the art community to use AI to basically violate Disney's trademarks, to, to poke Disney and say, are you sure this isn't a trademark violation? So we're seeing all these AI generated images that were very clearly Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck and other well, uh, Disney properties trying to poke the bear to get Disney to bring the lawsuit. And that is a violation, right? When you when you say Mickey Mouse, Winnie the Pooh, Iron Man, Spider-Man, that's mm -hmm. intellectual property because it's not an interpretation. It's, it's actual. Um, but the question is going to be in the style of right. So if I take yes, um, if I take you, Donna. And I put you in the style. And let's say that it doesn't violate the trademark. But yeah. uh, it, it, the, the whole thing is that style, the fact that it was trained on that model. And so, uh, I, I, look, to say I don't have a dog in this race would be silly. I'm, I, 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 I think it, it, it'll suck for the people that want to use this if you can't train this in because it's going to kill the, the diffusion model because it's, it's literally starting with an image and do it. We're not going to get into the technology, but it's, it's highly trained on this stuff. <clears throat> that's why it's so powerful. I, I, I look at it like this um, where I think this way it may go. I, and it depends on one judge, but <laughs> when the internet first came out, there was the same exact thing about, Hey, Google is profiting from my website. I never authorized them to put my website in the search engines and they're literally, I have copyright information. They're putting my copyright information and they're caching it on Google servers. <clears throat> but if you don't do it, you don't get ranked for the search engines. So Google said, oh, if you want to opt out, then, you know, put this, uh, put this no robots text and we won't, we won't crawl your site when we come up to it and you're not going to be in the search engines. And that kind of like put that away. <clears throat> so I'm wondering if there's going to be some type of thing, like literally exclusionary copywriting from training AI images using some type of NFT where you upload your work as original and you somehow no robots text this and say, I am putting this information out online to be viewed, but not trained by neural networks. The same way that we had this problem with the music industry when, um, you would you, Google didn't know how to deal with you uh, you putting a video in and putting music up there. The music company's like, well, Google, we're going to sue you. Uh, these people are putting our music, and so Google had to come up with a way to determine if some pre pre identified NFT type of thing is ever used again. And I have a feeling that there's going to be something that says, nope, you're out of luck. You put that information out into the public domain, and to tell Donna Fox that she can't look at every single piece of work that you did, that you put online, that she can't train for 20 years to try to copy your style, but make original work. Well, I'm sorry. Donna Wright has the Fox, uh, the, the, the right <laughs> to, uh, to, to copy your style as long as she's making original work. And I think that is going to be the thing that we're talking that 20 years simply went to 20 seconds, but that doesn't change it. Again, I'm making the argument against, I've heard the arguments for, and I could easily 
be the attorney for that and have everybody going, yeah, that's friggin' wrong to do that to these people. They're making a living uh, as well. But that that's where I personally think it's going to roll out. I think it's going to be some type of thing like, hey, you put that stuff out there. They're, if they're copying your work, that's a problem. They're using inspiration. And if you don't want your work, then we're going to create this different thing that says that you're not, this particular art is not allowed to be trained in neural networks. And I think we're going to see something like that. Yeah. So. It's fascinating when you think about uh, particular artists like um, Lichtenstein has a very distinctive style. He's a pop artist and lots of his backgrounds and images have polka dots on them. So you'll see does a lot of very comic style art with polka dots. Maybe and we'll use it in an example today. Yeah. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a good no, I said one. Maybe, it's a, no, I said maybe we will then. Yeah, yeah just, it's a very, just, oh, I thought you said you, you were going to. Oh, no, um, too much. It's inclusive. a very distinctive style, and and certainly people have copied it. Um, but is it his? He didn't invent the polka dot. He didn't invent the comic strip. He didn't invent any of the elements of it. But the fact that he uses that style and it becomes recognizable at his, does that make it a, a trademark or a identifiable or copyrightable technique i'm not so sure about that i mean i really do struggle with these ideas amanda's saying that that's actually how we learn art we copy another artist style until we create our own i am currently working on a replica of a van gogh van gogh's room i'm copying it that's what i'm doing like it's it's part of the process but we're not not allowed to train ai on van gogh's work from you know, from a hundred years ago, hundred, whatever it was, 150 years ago. That's so that's another good example. Of course you are. Cause it's all public domain. Yeah. Yeah. Van Gogh. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. So we're going to jump in now and we're going to, we're going to start going in. We're going to first break down the meta of AI images, the terms, and then we're going to go in. We're going to get our hands dirty. So let's do a one minute break. Um, and we'll be back in one minute. Hey there, it's Mike Fulsames AI Avatar. I hope you're enjoying the AI Week Groovathon. We're going to be here every day this week through Friday, streaming from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern, talking about all things AI with some awesome guests and workshops. But right now, it's time for a quick break. Don't worry, we'll be back soon. In the meantime, let me tell you about something exciting our backer project for Groove.ai. By backing this project, you can get lifetime access to Groove.ai and never make a payment to us or anyone for almost all of your AI needs ever again. But hurry, this opportunity is expiring soon. So head on over to Groove.ai forward slash backer to learn more and become a backer before time runs out. And here's something special for all paid or lifetime Groove.cm customers who back our project before we close. If that's you, you'll get a massive bonus of 3.75 million words of free AI content. That's equivalent of getting 3,500 emails with 1,000 words each. That's right. That's a 1,000 word email every day for a decade. Don't miss out on this incredible bonus. Act fast and become a backer of Groove.ai before midnight tonight. All right, that's it for now. Let's get back to the AI Week Groovathon. Now get ready for the power, the power of Groove AI. Become a backer of Groove today. All right, all right, we are back. Don't you love that Michael Same radio voice? Um, by the way, that radio voice is just me going, so uh, uh, it would be this. All right, let's get back to the AI Groovathon. Doesn't sound as good as radio as I was before. If you guys want me to show you my workflow for producing my voice in Audacity, let me know. I will show you exactly how I take a regular audio like this that sounds like this <clears throat> and how that gets transformed into a, a radio voice that I use in my VSLs and all that and I all that different stuff. If you want to see that, let me know and we'll, we'll sneak that in for today. All right. Insert graphic and music. Boop, 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 boop. Bing, 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 bing. It is officially happy hour. In about two minutes, we are going to take the page over at groove.ai forward slash replay. All right. And when you get down here, you click this button and you will see, oh, Donna already added it during the break. Uh, From, let's do this, set an alarm for 55 minutes. Okay. 
at uh, 118. You, I'm going to give you guys a five minute warning. You have exactly one hour to back the project for Groove.ai. Um, you heard the commercials. You know what Groove.ai is. I'm not going to sell it. I want to focus on the content. The purpose of this for the next one hour, you can get a four part payment plan. So normally it's $4.97 for two payments or one payment of $8.97. You could get those at any time between now and Sunday at midnight Eastern time. Uh, however, um, if you want to get this for four payments of $250, meaning you want to become a backer, you see where this is going. Uh, you see the uh, our thoughts around AI and how we're going to engineer Groove.ai to be different and better for direct response marketers than anybody else. Jump in. We need your help, as we say. Help us back this project. We've uh, raised close to half a million dollars already for it. We're looking to go straight to a million. Um, probably won't get there. We'll probably get to 750000 by Sunday at midnight. And then we're going to reopen again in April with your help as an affiliate. You're going to help promote it, be able to 40% on the funding of that backer. We think we can raise another $1.5 million. About half a million dollars of that is going to go to uh, affiliates. Uh, that's good for Groove. And it's good for you. So you've got an hour uh, to get this. Now, what is happy hour? It's a random one hour time that pops up anytime only during the live stream. It's going to happen one more time tomorrow, one more time Friday at a random time. So you can't guarantee that you're going to be there or paying attention or have the opportunity to see it. So you want to get in now. Come on, it's 250 bucks for your first payment. And then three more payments, uh, a little bit more convenient for you than jumping in. If you want to jump in and you've, you're there and you're like, hey, screw it. I got it. I want to save 100 bucks. Go for the 8.97, like 71% of our people are doing. And if not, and if you're just here to enjoy the content, that's okay too. Let's talk about one thing as well. Um, I saw right here when Donna was talking that she had said to a user, um, "Let's see. So I got to go. There's been a lot of comments here in the chat. Donna said." We have answered this question many times. Please see Mike's announcement video from last week for a full discussion of this concern. I can only imagine Facebook user, you're wanting to know, um, hey, you know, is Gro why is Groove talking about AI? They should focus on the app. Uh, so what you can do, if you want to know uh, about that concern, and uh, I have it right here for you. You go to the Groove.ai forward slash replay, click on the last FAQ, for current Groove.cm customers, the very last question, how will this project impact the development of Groove.cm? You can literally click right here and watch a video where uh, we address that concern and you will leave feeling better about Groove.ai being part of Groove Digital than not. Okay, so let's jump right in. You've guys got uh, about, um, you guys got about, 55 minutes left to take advantage of that uh, app, happy hour where you're getting a payment plan to make it a little bit more affordable. Go to groove.ai forward slash replay. All right, we're officially in. You want to be in a document right now. Uh, you, you want to make sure that you have access to the document right now called AI images. Now, we posted this about an hour ago. Uh, so we're going to, you know, once I heard, this is terrible. Once I read how many times I said, uh, um, like that, now it's all I'm doing is hearing it and it's getting in my head. So I'm just going to try not to, uh, let that get in my head. So here we go. Hopefully I didn't just do that to you as well. So we have a document that we're going to be using as our format today. I'm going to make my screen a little bit bigger. No, I'm not. I'm just going to make this, uh, this a little bit bigger for you to see here. Okay. And I'm not seeing anybody in this document, Donna, which is odd. Let me let me hit refresh. Usually I see like a bunch of little names here. So let's share that again. Just so I, I haven't I shared this one yet. I just I did it oh. one at a time. So uh, I haven't. Um, I'm going to share it right now. Working on it. Yeah, it was just a little sign to me that, yeah. you know, there's usually people. Uh, I want you to pay attention to the screen here today. I don't want you to. Um, be playing around too much with this document because there's a lot of videos and different things. Just know that you have this when we're done so that you could play around with it. I have to tell you of all of the resources that we've given you for AI week, this is probably the one that you're going to go back to the most. In fact, if this was my secret weapon, I would be happy just to have this for, for all things you'll ever need for images. So let's walk through this right now. 
the first thing that we did is we added uh, people that you should be following on YouTube. Uh, most of the stuff and the links that you're going to be seeing here where I say tutorial are going to these different things. So what's nice is I'm not going to spend time showing you how to install stable diffusion on your computer today. Even though I'm going to show you why you don't have to do that, there are online versions of it. I'm still not going to waste my time when I can just say, if you want to learn how to do that, there's a tutorial that'll teach you how to do that. So let's start here um, at the top. You want to make sure that you click on all of these links. And then you go and you click follow and hit the notification bell so that you can receive notifications if, uh, if you want. Also remember, let's add this, Donna. Uh, Donna, if you can, let me make you able to edit this. <clears throat> Donna, if you could add the playlist uh, to right here so I could keep the, the stream moving. So Will do. I'm also creating a playlist a public playlist that when I watch a video that I think is worthy of being uploaded to this doc, instead of me just adding video, 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 and spamming our Facebook group, I, I'll put some videos in the Facebook group, but you can just follow that channel and you'll probably see I'm going to be adding two videos a week of things that are related to all things AI. Okay, let's talk about the first company that we're all familiar with. It's called OpenAI. And that is their, their image generation system is called DALL-E. Why is it called DALL-E? Well, it was named after, uh, Donna will correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Salvatore or Salvatore DALL-E. He's an artist. Uh, Donna's nodding her head. So Salvatore DALL-E is an artist, but there's also um, an artificial intelligence that went sentient by Pixar, and his name was WALL-E. So they took artificial intelligence from Wally and Salvatore Dali, and they created Dali. Now, if uh, if that is a oh gosh, I didn't know that, and now that makes you understand that a little better. I think that's a pretty cool name. I gotta admit. Um, however, I think that OpenAI's Dali is the least interesting video uh, image text -to image engine out there. Um, it does tend to put more focus on natural looking images where the other engines seem to go a little bit into fantasy and art and cartoon. But believe it or not, most people prefer that style. And to get open AI to do that, you have to give it a lot of prompts, like really specific paragraph worth of prompts. Mid journey, you can just say, a sheep on a mountain, and it will create some really, really cool different things. You don't have to get crazy with prompt engineering with MidJourney. However, they do have an in-depth prompt engineering, which we'll get into, where you can do some really, really uh, interesting things. The cost of Dali is about 13 cents to create an image, which, by the way, that's pretty high if you ask me. Uh, you can buy 115 credits at a time for 15 bucks, which works out to about 13 cents. Their user interface looks like this. I'm going to show you something very unimpressive. I'm going to type in a sheep on a mountain top. Okay, and generate. All right. And this just cost me 15 cents. No, not true. They actually give you about 25 or 50 free credits. All right. And I got to tell you, I am not impressed at all with Dal E. So if you're, if you're ready to get out right now and be like, Mike, if this is what you're going to show me today, I'm out. No, that's why I put this up at the top. I feel like just actually deleting this from the document, but this is an educational document. Let's get into the nitty gritty now. Okay. There's a, a a technique called stable diffusion. It's a model, okay? This is all the rage. This is by a company called Stability.ai. Stability.ai is an artificial intelligence company that is competing with OpenAI. Um, they're, they're really big on images right now, but you can see they're also doing some other things as well, all right? You know, biomedicine, there's lots of stuff that they're doing. One of their models called Stable Diffusion is their image model. Look, they have an API, and that's why I told you that we're going to be able to, uh, you'll be able to go in here, get your credits, billings, all these different things, and they have a playground and all that we'll get into. Okay, 
So this is a competitor to OpenAI and Google. And when it comes to images, they're leading the way. Okay, so how does stable diffusion work? Well, up in, let's just pretend that when they came out, what their vision of this was, it was so that developers can build on it for customers. So there was, there's really no place to use it or wasn't any place to use it unless some developer created an app. And those are down here. We're going to talk about some of these. So if you wanted to use it, you can install it on your Mac or your PC. There's a tutorial to do that. Um, even Matt Wolf, who made a video showing you how to do it, doesn't do it. He uses something called Run Diffusion. I'll probably move this up to here. <clears throat> no, let's let's leave it. Let's leave it where it was. Let's go linear here. So this company, Stable Diffusion, did an install of it, and they created their own little user interface, and it's called DreamStudio.ai. They give you 200 free credits, which are generations. Basically, you can create 200 free images. And for $10, you can get roughly another 1,000 images, right? So it's pretty cheap. Look, if 1,000 images, let's be honest, for you to, for you to generate 1,000 images, to spend 10 bucks, is that, that's why I keep talking to you guys about like wholesale pricing is, is really incredible. Now, keep in mind, this is generating 850 images, not putting 850 images on your website. To generate an image that you want on your website, you sometimes have to go through about five or 10 iterations by saying, um, upscale, give me another version. Now add a hat, change this to a leather jacket. And so you might do 15 different quote unquote images to arrive to the final image. So that is actually 15 images, not one image. But let's take a look at Dream Studio right now. And then we're going to later come back and do some, uh, some playing around in here. <coughs> so Dream Studio is pretty cool. Okay. They, this has all of these different things here, these little scales, um, you know, the width of the image and all these different things. Uh, I'm not going to mess too much around with this. I wish they had a little thing in that here that said reset defaults, but let's just type in here a sheep in uh, on a mountain. I'm just going to start with that for now. And these are, these are generic prompts. I'm going to show you how you can really do some good prompt engineering later. We're going to go and we're going to actually play around with some of this stuff in a minute. But these, as you can see, are starting out, are looking a little bit better. You can do things like a top-down view. You could say during the rain and all these different things. But let me show you something that's really cool here. I'm jumping ahead. But what's nice about this user interface is they have this little thing here where you could click on show image editor. Um, or, or let me see, I think you can, you can pull the image in. Let me just click the back button here. Um, edit this image. Okay, <clears throat> you hit the edit image. And I believe that I can do things like paint right here. And like the Band-Aid is like fix and touch up. So I'm just going to go like this. That's a little bit big. Is there a way to make my brush smaller, brush size? Let's go a little bit smaller and watch this. Okay, and now I can say a top hat. And it should put a top hat on top of there. All right. Um, look, I didn't, yeah, I'm, I'm playing around. I'm going to show you how these things are actually done better, but you could actually put it in a leather jacket, put sunglasses on, a rainbow behind it using all that. Donna put a little smile on her face there. I don't know if she's reading a comment or if she just saw something that made her giggle. But, I, I uh, just love the <laughs> idea of a sheep and a top hat. So, <laughs> yeah, right. And so, yeah. and, and by the way, the fuzziness of this top hat is because I don't have these, these things in place. I'm telling you, I, I've got to get some of these things dialed down, but um here is something else that you can do. Let, let's just um, let's just do Wiki Elon Musk. <clears throat> and I normally wouldn't go here to get this image. Okay, I I would probably just rip one offline. But you know, we're recording a video right now, and uh, you know, I don't feel like going. You know, getting a a royalty free image or anything like that. 
Uh, and I don't want to be accused of using somebody's copyright images from Getty images off of Google. So just to keep things a little bit easier right now, I'm going to take this link address. I'm going to right click. Ooh, did I do something wrong? Let's do this. Um, let's just save image as, right? <clears throat> okay. So I just downloaded that to there. Let's, let's just um, refresh this page. I don't know uh, how to restart. I'm sure there's a, a thing to clear, but let's just restart. Okay, and now I can upload an image. <clears throat> and we're going to upload Elon Musk. And now the same thing, I can, I can just go. I, I, let, let's just do this. Add sunglasses. Let's see if I have to do the unpainting. I'm wondering if it's going to add a sun and glasses. Oh no! It knew oh. that you meant sunglasses. Yeah, and and it's and these scales are supposed to keep it more like Elon Musk, um, so that's one of the the things that I have to figure out steps. How many steps do you want? Let's just see the CFG scale. Just how how much the image will be like your prompt. The higher values keep your images closer to the prompt. Well, closer to the prompt, but what about the original image? Uh, so is there an undo button here? Well, whatever. Let's just use this guy. Uh, and, oh, you know what? That's, that's the problem with the inpainting. Let, let's do this one more time. Let's, I bet if I inpaint, I'm going to get exactly, that's the whole point why you want to use the inpainting. So that's mm. something I just learned right there. You want to use inpainting so that you don't mess things around. So we're going to paint in little sunglasses. <clears throat> And, and, and by the way, it'll go outside of this stuff. It, it knows that you're saying, oh, use this sort of as a guide, right? So there, now <clears throat> we can say add Ray, Ray Ban's two words. I, I think that would be two words, the way you made four, but let's see what happens. Oh, that sunglasses is one word? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now it should keep Elon Musk the same with Ray-Ban sunglasses. And again, the, the, I'm not great with these different scales and stuff. Not sure what happened with these different images. And then you can select uh, an image or re-roll it, et cetera. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself right here. But I wanted to uh, basically show you what Dream Studio is. And there's actually better ones. We didn't get to them yet. Mm -hmm. They're like playground and different things. Okay. So the next is what's known as Discord-based servers, servers. What is Discord? Imagine it's kind of like Slack for gamers, right? So Discord is, a, is an app that you run and you can, you can create different images with a prompt. Now, if you're a free user of Discord, you have to use it in here. And then what you have to go into any one of these different rooms and you're seeing images are being generated by other people. You can see their prompts. The problem is if I was to put a prompt in here, you have to hit backslash and hit I, and then the imagine prompt comes up and then you type in what you want right here, a sheep on a mountain. Now the problem with this is this is gonna take a little while and you're watching other people's prompts are going in here. And sometimes it's hard to find your prompt. You'll hear a little noise telling you that it's ready, but then it gets pushed up and you immediately gotta save it. And so the nice thing that happens when uh so let's find my prompt here here you can see it's being made um i'm at 31 percent now mid journey is going to add kind of like this artistic look and feel to it so there's prompts i'm going to give you to, where you can make things so real you're not going to believe but look at mid journey's work guys i'm going to open this all the way up like they just make really, really nice work. Again, they add some artistic flair to it. And in, in terms of photorealism, it's 90% photorealism, 10% artistic. But you can remove the artistic with just a couple of prompts that I'm going to show you later. Now, these are just for viewing. We're going to uh, talk about these different things here called... <clears throat> okay, did we crash here? Yep, we crashed. Please don't tell me we crashed my computer. All right, so we have to restart Discord. 
and we'll just do that while we're um and so here's the problem right as a free user of mid-journey uh they only give you 25 free images let's shut this off as well this grammarly really gets on on the nerves huh <coughs> they they give you um 25 images but then after that it's ten dollars a month now here's the problem with ten dollars a month right ten dollars a month is ten dollars a month it's not ten dollars for 850 images and this is what we call the no rollover problem you're paying for credits even though you don't use them so you might be getting a thousand images a month but if you don't use it you don't get rollover okay so that's you know that's important but look for me you know for ten dollars a month <clears throat> you know i'm okay with it i like the way that they've seasoned their their images in the background so let's go back to mid journey and you're going to see the inherent problem first off i got to remember the room that i was in I think it was newbie 78. And now you can see there's all this new stuff. And I don't even know that I could find my image. Right. So what if you're a paid member, what mid journey allows you to do. OK. And just understand I'm not Oriel. You'll click on here. You'll click here. And there's a three to six minute video, five minute video. And the guy shows you essentially a little step by step process where you you add something, you click over here, you add it to your own server. It's like five steps, and then you get this. And now, if any of you are using MidJourney and you didn't know this, you're going to be like, Mike, I cannot believe that you can do this. I have my own server that I called Art Gallery, <clears throat> okay? And here in Art Gallery, I could create my own channels where I might have to, oh, there it is. It's, it's just telling me that one of my other images is done. And I've got my own little... Uh, images that you know we we've done things here with you know Michelle and Donna and all these different things when we were playing around with it. This is called test art uh, here, and this is you know just I think test art is what I'm using you know for for public. Uh, there's some creepy things that I'm going to show you later that you could do with Blend. I could take a picture of Homer Simpson <coughs> and me, and if I put I'm going to show it to you. It's creepy. If I put Homer Simpson first and then me. Well, then it will create me as a Homer Simpson character. If I say me first, and then I upload an image of Homer Simpson using the blend where I'm going to show you later, it actually creates ugh, a real life version of me if I, with Homer Simpson features. Let me freak you guys out here, <clears throat> and I'm going to show you. This was me just experimenting. <clears throat> so this was me. Um, taking an image of me, like this right here is an image of me. I believe this would have been my, well, they already deleted the image. It doesn't store forever. So I took an image of me uh, and then I said, you know, to make me look like a, a Pixar character. Uh, so this, uh, not, not a Pixar, the up character. So this is Mike Phil same as an up character. It took my features and made me as an up character. So you could start seeing uh, that if I wanted Mike Phil same to look more like Mike Filsaime, but also a Pixar character, we could do that as well. I mean, that literally looks like my dad as a Pixar character with my hair, right? Okay, so here are two different images uh, where I where I used a, a previous image of me uh, to be uh, like a, a, a superhero as a Homer Simpson character. This is pretty freaky right here. This would this was taking a picture of me, my wedding photo, and then a picture of Homer Simpson, and then uh, a reverse version of that, which which would be uh, a Homer Simpson character with a picture of me and adding some comic book art to it. All right, um, but again, kind of freaky stuff here, guys. Like really, that's <laughs> that doesn't freak you out. I don't know what does. Right, uh, Mike feels same as Homer Simpson. Uh, and then I'm going to show you some really cool prompts that generate all of this stuff. In fact, I'll try to find the video that's related to all of these styles. Um, this is Retrowave, Synthwave, Duotone. I'm going to show you a video that I'm just going to hyperlink to this. This right here is just called Retrowave. And Retrowave is instantly going to give you Synth Terminator, right? <clears throat> um, uh, more images in different styles, right? This is just more images. This is me. I said me as um, uh, me in the style of like um, uh, Marvel uh, Marvel comics. Now, obviously, it's taking a, a little bit of Tony Stark and me and blending it. That's essentially what's happening. But damn, that's friggin' handsome. 
Um, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. So you're seeing me just going in. What did I put here? 1990s point and click 16 bit adventure. These are things that I gave you right here. You're seeing me doing all of these different versions of the same image. I did it in Synthwave. I did it as a Pixar character. Okay. So this is me as Charlie Harper. I don't know if Don has ever heard of Charlie Harper, but that's his style, right? This is called Retrowave. And I'm going to give you all of these different prompts. So here's me, male, comic book hero in the style of Mar Marvel Comics, Tony Stark. There's Mike Filsame blended with Tony Stark. Come on, look at this. This one right here. That's sort of me. Right. We could we could re-roll that and keep giving it my image. But I think Donna's got a little smile because she's like, I think I can see where we could use that on Canva. Right. So if I like this particular image, the V1, V2, V3, V4, if I just click this, what it's going to do is basically me saying I don't like any of these or give me four more. That's called re-roll. In my settings, I have this thing here. You have to type ask slash s you can go into the settings and then you hit enter and then your settings panel comes up and i have something called remix mode and so what remix mode means is when i click on let's say i want version one two three four if i click on version one two three this one it doesn't re-roll just this means re-roll all four this without the remix mode means give me more like this but with remix mode i could say give me more like this and i can say with sun glasses and i'm in my own server so this thing is going to produce that all the way down here you see it's starting the job and it's going to do it. And I don't have to worry about trying to find my image with thousands of other people processing at the same time. So while that's doing that, let's go back up to there. <clears throat> this was me making Donna as Wonder Woman, by the way. And again, it's merging Donna and Wonder Woman. <clears throat> this was me and Michelle. Uh, this photo right here. This was uh, going out for, I think, Michelle's birthday or our anniversary or something. And I just put some things in. And look at that. It's just different styles of, you know, it's in the style of, right? It remixed some different images uh, in that style. <clears throat> okay. This is me testing, like, what, how to do a website design. That's why we're going to be able to do websites for you. All right. So uh, here, the U1, U2, U3, U4, this is what you use, guys. You can always right click and click open link, and then you can click the plus, plus button but it's low resolution. When you like something, image three, you're going to click upscale. But let's do that down at the bottom with the one that it's making for us right now. All right. I don't really like these new ones. Is it at 100%? Yes, I don't. It added sunglasses. Okay. You know, but I'm not a fan. But you can see how the, the remix image worked. Let's go back <clears throat> to that one. Remember, I simply uploaded an image. When you upload an image, it gives you a URL, and then you can just paste that URL. And I'm going to show you. You literally just click the up, bu up button, upload a file. You get an image, and then it gives you a URL like this. And then you, you just say, imagine that URL as a male comic book hero in the style of Mar Marvel Comics, Tony Stark, and it created this. Now, if I like this, I can simply click one, two, three, upscale version three. And just like this, I'm going to get a high definition. Now in my settings, I can set those to 8K, 4K, or 1080p. I have mine set to 4K. And if you, the higher you go, the more you pay in credits. So if we scroll all the way down, <clears throat> we're going to see that it's doing a job. We're going to come back here in a minute and see th that image upscaled. And I can pull that into Canva and use it in a screenshot, uh, et cetera. I could, I could say, I said Tony Stark. I could have said in Iron Man suit as well. Right. And I could say facing left, top down view. I could add different things. And we're going to learn about the prompt engineering coming soon. All right. So that is mid journey. It's run in Discord, which means you it's very prompt based and all that different stuff. It's not a SaaS company like Dream Studio where you're like, I just want to go to a website and have a place that's storing my images. Why do I have to be part of this Discord server? There's pros and cons. Okay. 
if you uh, if you want to add it to your own little mini Discord server where you don't see everybody else, there's a video here that shows you how to do that. And there's another company called Blue Willow. Right now, they're they're a free version of Mid Journey. I would call this <clears throat> A plus plus plus. I'm going to call Blue Willow um, B plus. I just got a little beep. That means it's ready. <clears throat> Look at this. Open link, just like that, right? And now I could have trained it with, you know, the Groove.ai logo or anything, or I could open up Canva and pull this right in and saying, uh, you know, Mike Phil same, uh, Mike Phil same, uh, and Tony Stark teach AI this week, something like that. I wouldn't do that. That's a horrible headline. I'd probably use ChatGPT to tell me to come up with a good headline with a Tony Stark hook. Okay. Now let's go into the Blue Willow server and show you what that looks like. We are going to go here. This is Blue Willow. Now the problem with this is I have to go into a channel. Let's just go into Rookie 9, see all these people making images. What's nice about this is if you see something somebody likes, you friggin' just grab it and paste it into your document as, as, a, as a signature like I have here, and I'm gonna show you how I've done some of these things. And if I like it, I'm just gonna put it into my document and then I'll do like this. Person, blah, 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 exactly like you'll see here, right? What do, I'll translate that to a person or object place and then I will just put in what I want, but that's the nice thing that you get uh, whoops, with, uh, with seeing other people's prompts. You're like, oh my God, I like that. But I'm gonna show you some either even cooler things where to find prompts. Okay. Learning so from go. other people's prompts is, is a lot like I learned how to create web pages. I learned by looking at the source code of other websites and studying the HTML. You're doing the same thing with prompts. You're looking at people's prompts if you like the image that was generated to then learn what they use to create that image. Yeah. And I've got three things for you guys that I'm going to show you. There's a little secret for later. It's called Flow GPT. It's like prompt based, but free. Uh, are we getting a delay in talking or is it just me? Should I refresh and come back? Donna was a little bit uh, delayed. Am I, am I okay to me? We're having storms here. So it's probably on my end. Okay, great. All right. So this I'm going to get to folks. We're going to put this in the document. Flow GPT is a great place to get prompts. I'm just going to put here. Let's just put a URL. And we're also going to put prompt base. Here, these are paid ones. We'll get to this later. <laughs> are you guys enjoying this? You know, again, I know it's it's a it's a little bit different, but when I show you, I'm gonna I'm gonna take you from a, a C minus, D minus, or possibly F at creating images like I was to a good A plus technician, where you're gonna be able to teach people how to create those prompts. I'm telling you. You're going to absolutely love that, what I'm going to show you here. We haven't even gotten started yet. We haven't even gotten started. All right. So um, Blue Willow, we're going to go into. Where's my Discord server? Right here. And we're just going to do slash, pull up my prompt, image, a sheep on a mountain. All right. Very boring prop, right? Uh, but you know, we just—it's it, it, a nice, boring prompt, so that we could see the differences uh, between the two. Now, now I got to find mine. Where is it? Did it not go through? <clears throat> oh, here, great. We're working on it. Stay tuned for fun images. So the nice thing is, Discord goes batunk and gives me a little uh, thing. We just got to remember that I'm in rookie nine. Do you see why I don't like Discord? Like if I leave and I come back and I click one of these things, I'm going to forget where my image was. And I've got to make sure I download it, save it to my hard drive, all these different things. Other, other people may tell you, no, Mike, you could click in here and go in and find images in your library. Okay, here it is. It's done. This, uh, I'm not all that impressed. I mean, it's okay, right? With prompting, you could get this really good, but come on, it was nowhere as good as Mid Journey, right? So that's why, Premium comes with a little cost. I'm giving this a B plus. Uh, Dream Studio, I'm going to give a B plus. Um, Run Diffusion, we're not going to uh, rate that because that's literally an installation of the application that runs things. This is this is what we're going to be installing in Groove.ai. Okay. In fact, Dream Studio, which I showed you, this entire user interface, which we were playing with before, 
is what we can what we have an API to pull this right into Groove. So our image editor is going to be like this. This is an open source editor that we could pull into Groove.ai and you can attach your API key to it to get wholesale rating, okay? Just as I showed you, unlike Midjourney, you're gonna be able to pay 10 bucks once and get a thousand images. It'll probably last you two years, right? That's what I mean when I say the difference between us and the other guys is not just that you're getting wholesale, you're getting wholesale with rollover. Midjourney is $10, but you lose those credits at the end of the month. If we go to Midjourney pricing, you gotta, you're, you're gonna be very happy that you backed our project, I'm telling you. When you go to Midjourney, and we go to, let's just go Midjourney pricing. We're going to see that they keep using the term here, uh, rollover. Uh, they have, a, they have a different place where you actually, I know there's a place where, where let, let me see their actual pricing page. I'll make it very difficult to, oh, I have to sign in. That's what it is. And when you sign in, you're at a web page. Um, all right, I'm not going to do this. Forget it. They're just making me already log into Discord, which I already did. But trust me, yeah, th their, their pricing says no rollover. All right, so I just got the beep boop. So we better uh, get back there. Oh, that's just something else that it's telling me. All right, so um, out of the discourse-based ones, this is the one right here that we want to highlight. This is probably your best friend in image editing right now. So I'm actually just going to give this the full highlight uh, because it's, it's one of the strongest uh, out there. Now, Run Diffusion... I can't demo for you, but basically it is something that allows you to uh, run stable diffusion completely on, uh, on a server that makes it look like you installed it on your own computer. You, it's, it's constantly upgraded. Their prices are great. Uh, this is what Matt Wolf uses uh, when he wants to use stable diffusion. I don't think it's necessary. I'm not going to install it. I'm not going to pay for it, but I wanted to give you all of the information. It will look something like this. Um, I believe it's going to look something like this. <clears throat> Try control net. This is how, bas basically, this is an installation right now. I'm giving you a link of a place that actually hosts it online where you could use stable diffusion for free, where these th th there's things like scribble, where you can draw an image, all of these different things you can do a pose. We're gonna get into a little bit of that later uh, as well. Let's just wrap up uh, this section and then we're gonna get into the terms and start actually making some art, okay? Um, is there a cap or rollover? I'm not sure what you were referring to, uh, Amy, but... Um, uh, again, each each one of these has their own uh, own that are different. So I'm not sure which app you were referring to. All right, but again, uh, Blue Willow is free. You get unlimited free images. But I think you know for ten bucks right now, you're gonna get really good images from from Midjourney. All right, now there's a company called Playground AI. Pay attention here. I have to give this for the pricing. A plus 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 for pricing. Uh, are they going to continue to be a thousand images for free a day? It resets every day your credits. I don't know if they're if this is their three month freemium model to get everybody to start using it, but it's great. And then for fifteen dollars a month, you get two thousand images per day with no rollover. But who cares? You get another two thousand the next day. Uh, what's really great here is it's a great way to search prompts and get prompts on any image. And there's a styles drop down. Uh, Donna, um, my uh, Drinks went through me a little bit quick. I'm doing the PP dance. Let's do a three minute break. Let's do a bio break, everybody. I'll be back in uh, three minutes to go over this. I don't want to rush it doing the little PP dance in my chair. We'll be back in three minutes. Hey there, it's Mike Philsames AI Avatar. Thanks for tuning in to our Groovathon. We hope you're enjoying all of the great AI content we're serving up for you. But before we get back to the show, we've got a quick message about Groove.ai. Have you noticed that AI is becoming like streaming platforms? 
Remember when cutting the cord with cable companies was all the rage? Well, now there are a dozen streaming services and the cost can add up quickly. The same is happening with AI. Yes, there are great platforms out there, but the cost can be as high as $4,000 a month or more. That's why we created Groove.ai as a backup project. It's going to provide you with the best AI solutions at a fraction of the cost, and it's coming just later this year. And with our limited lifetime deal, you'll have lifetime access to all of the top features of Groove.ai when it's released. And right now you can get that for just one payment of $897 or two payments of $497. And with our wholesale pricing on AI, you'll save up to eight times what the other leading brands are charging. But we don't just save you money. We also offer the benefits of a marketplace. That's right. We're making a marketplace for other AI developers to create cool apps for you. Don't find the task or workflow for your needs. There's going to be a marketplace where others are extending our platform with powerful AI tools. Just like how iOS, Android, WordPress, Google Chrome, and Shopify are better because of their marketplace that extends the values of their technology. Soon when Groove.ai is released, you will have access to a full suite of AI tools, including content creation, copywriting, image creation, and so much more. This will allow you to streamline your content creation and get even better results for your business. What makes Groove.ai different? Well, number one, we give you wholesale pricing on AI, and we don't lock you into one technology like OpenAI. You'll be getting OpenAI, Google's powerful AI engine, Stable Diffusion, everyone out there you'll be able to connect to. The other platforms are built on just one technology. And our lifetime deal, you'll never have to worry about monthly payments again. And here's something special for all paid or lifetime Groove.cm customers who back our project before we close. Those customers get a massive bonus of 3.5 million words of free AI content. That's the equivalent of getting 3,500 free emails with a thousand words each. That's right. That will allow you to create one 1,000 word email every single day for a decade. So don't miss out on this incredible bonus. Act fast and become a backer of Groove.ai before midnight. So don't wait too long. This lifetime deal is only available for a limited time. Once the backer project is complete and Groove.ai is released, the lifetime deal will be gone forever. After that, it will cost $99 a month or $9.97 a year. So if you want to take advantage of this incredible opportunity and save big on your AI needs, become a backer of Groove.ai before it's too late. Don't wait. Join the over 500 backers already in this Groove.ai community. As a backer, be the first to experience the power of AI when it's released later this year. Now let's get back to the AI Week Groovathon with the real Mike Vilsame. Now get ready for the power the power of Groove AI become a backer of Groove today. Yes, yes, yes. That song was created using AI. We went to a website and we typed in words and it came up with a song. So we went over that yesterday. So that was an AI song. All right. So let's let's get back without the PP dance rushing all of this. So we finished the Discord-based uh, servers. We said basically- You're no yes, longer I'm... sharing your screen. Beep, blop. I had mm -hmm. to, uh, I, I, it was me. It was stuttering, the browser. So I just uh, restarted and now everything is crystal clear. Oh, okay. I noticed when the video was playing stuttering, I said, okay, that's not Donna Storm. Thank you for reminding me here. That's what's good about having you there, Donna. I could have been going for 20 minutes. Uh, you know, and people just blowing up the chat saying, That's we don't why see I your try to never leave you, you hanging, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So there we go. All right. So we were talking about the discord servers. So right now, the ones that I, that I do like is dream studio. We're going to be using that today. I think it's really, really cool. Uh, mid journey is good. I don't use blue willow. Uh, I don't like the fact that it's on a public server and that I can't add it to my own server. Run diffusion. If you're a geek, if you're one of the five, I'll probably say 2% of the people that are on here that are so technical that you're like, hey, I want to download Stable Diffusion. I want to go look at their documents and I want to understand what every slider is. I don't want drop downs. I don't want styles. I want to know how this stuff works in the background. I'm, that's not even me right now. All right. So that's called Run Diffusion. All right. Moving on, we were talking about great online versions. Playground.ai. Let's load them up. Okay. Now, I do have to say, I, uh, it's not necessarily a warning, but this is to echo what Donna said yesterday. Uh, Mid Journey, um, 
you know, I, I went through their market, their, their, um, their showcase. We didn't find a single man. Um, I have a lot of reasons why I could tell you why a lot of this, this is definitely more NSFW than mid journey. Um, but I think because generally people that are into graphic design is probably 90% men, right? The Photoshop people in the world. And those are the guys that are using these tools. It's very technical. And so guys are guys. And this is the art that, you know, these people make. And this is showing you when you click on animals, you click on anime, you click on fashion, <clears throat> and look at these photorealistic uh, photos. We're going to show you some really, really cool stuff, folks. I'm, I'm telling you, we're going to blow you away here. Uh, and if we go back to whatever rising is, I guess these are upvoted, right? So who's upvoting them, et cetera, et cetera. And when I say this is more NSFW, not, su not, you know, not suitable for work, uh, than mid-journey, you're going to see a lot more you know, fantasy women drawn things, uh, then here's your first man, et cetera. But that's just, you know, the world that we live in. But what I like about Playground and what I like about Leonardo.ai, these are great, guys. What I love about these is this, that Mid Journey doesn't give you. Get ready to get blown away. You can click on anything you like and let's just click on this little, this, this one right here. Well, I, I want to pick on something uh, like this, okay? <clears throat> Watch what I love about this, guys. You get the prompts and the negative prompt. Mm -hmm. So you can now take this and copy it and paste it into playground.ai. And here, remove from image, which is nice because MidJourney doesn't have a remove. You have to say, know this, know that, know this. I don't want this. I don't want that. I don't want this. I don't want that. And what's nice about it is let's open up Playground AI. Let's just click it from the document. <clears throat> you have to create an account. I'm already logged in. You can see my picture. I'm going to click create. And guess what? We get one of these things right here. And you can uh, see tutorials by clicking here. I even linked to some of their tutorials here. So I really like this for a number of reasons. Number one, they have this filter here where I can just slap a style on it. I can upload my picture and say, I want it in the style of an oil painting. There's All Lichtenstein right? So right there, a pop art. Remember I mentioned what? Lichtenstein earlier? The pop art yeah. filter there is Lichtenstein. Uh, uh, it's give me a grid. on the left. Okay. Where the, uh, yeah, that. Oh, this is, that's him. That's okay, him. so watch this. Right, we're gonna we're gonna upload an image, and look, there's even a little button here that says edit. So that even brings up the same masking thing that we were talking about before. So um, I don't know how to get back. Oh, draw something. I'm gonna show you that you can literally draw like a, a portion. It'll create a car. So we've got a lot to go over. I don't see the back. I think button. you can X out that white image because you went to draw something. Okay. It's, yeah. Thank you, Donna. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna bring in Elon Musk again. Okay, and I'm going to now do Lichtenstein, right? So let's say Donna wanted to do a picture of me or her or Simone, and let's just hit generate and see what happens. Uh, do I have to um, type a prompt in? Um, edit with mask. Let's see. Um, uh, on, let's just see. Uh, uh, in a room. Let me just do that and see if it's going to give me the image to image. And we did the style pop art. So let's see what's going to happen here. Okay, that's, look at that. That's sort of what we got here, right? Image strength. Like if I hover over this, it doesn't tell me like, how much it's supposed to stay onto the image. Mm -hmm. Let's just play. Let's do this and give it, oh, look at that. I get, it doesn't delete the image. And I can hover over these things, Donna, and I can start doing the in-painting and stuff with this. <clears throat> so we, we brought the image strength down very low. And then I'm going to bring it up high on the next one. And let's see if we can do multiple ones at the same time. So we can just click generate. No, we can't. One at a time. 
good AI. Don't multitask. Good AI. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So we're going to come back to this. Okay. All right. So now that we got that, I'm going to make the image, image strength high so that we can get a contrast to see. It looks like the low image strength is allowing it to go more cartoon. Mm -hmm. uh, and this was medium. And then I could put negative prompts in, remove like no red lips, you know, no whatever or whatever the case may be. And is it generating? Error, your request activated the API safety filters and could not be processed. Please modify your prompt seed and try again huh. in a room period. <laughs> <laughs> nice modification. <laughs> yeah. Oh, guys, just so you know, just to make you know, women feel better about this technology and actually all of us to make feel better about this technology for our kids and everything. This stuff is so sensitive. It's difficult to get certain things that you want. Mm -hmm. Like low cut dress is not allowed to be put in there. Right. And sometimes you're like, well, I'm not really trying to, I'm just trying to get to something. But so they really do not allow you to create, you know, anything, you know, uh, you know, I have you know. been um, playing with image generation generation software for reference photos for images that I want to draw or paint. And um, I was trying to do an image of someone uh, with their arms behind their back and sort of like this. And yeah. I couldn't get AI to generate it for me. Oh, Donna, you're going to love what I'm about to show you. We have this thing that we're going to talk about called model posing to an image. Ah. So while that's generating, let me show you a little video on how that works. I might like this. Yeah, so check this out. So I'm gonna keep this on mute. <clears throat> and so what happens is you can either find another picture that exists online and say, I want this pose. And then you superimpose it with another image or whatever the case may be. But let me show you <clears throat> where he gets into actually putting in a, a pose like this. You could put in a pose like this, he's showing you, and oh. it will actually pose it. So you can go to Shutterstock and say, I want this pose, this but now you, put pose. In, now you put in a prompt. You say, a, a girl anime, you know, blah, blah. of course it's gonna be a girl anime, you know, the, the way these, uh, <laughs> these things are. I, I apologize, it's just, I, that's I the nature of the beast. I also wanted to say, <laughs> I really appreciate how delicately you're handling that. Yeah, it, 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 look. Yeah, so here he just drew a turtle, literally, with his mouse. This is called Scribble. And now watch this output. That's so amazing. you can either either draw, use your iPad, or put an image, and you could get a pose. So let's find where he did that with the pose again. So yeah, so you could say, I want this pose. And so you, tra you train it just for this pose, and then you upload a picture of yourself. Hmm. And then you say, uh, at night, in a leather jacket, et cetera, et cetera. And you're going to get that picture in that pose. So, yeah. So I'm not an expert at this stuff. I've watched the videos on it. There's another video here by, I believe, by Matt Wolf. <clears throat> or, uh, yeah. So Matt Wolf goes and talks about it. Look at his thumbnail, obviously, that you just saw there. But let's see what, what he's doing. Okay. So he's he took a picture of himself, it looks like, uh, in a pose. Right. And then it does this thing where it basically creates a sketch. This is the AI learning right here. It creates a sketch. Um, and then so once he has that pose, that's the pose. He can then make a wireframe out of it or whatever, all this little stuff here. Um, and then. OK, I'm waiting for it to play. Let's see. OK, uh, again, this is now the image prompt is based on that. But here he is doing the same thing. He's drawing a cat. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> He's drawing a cat and he says, generate image. Let's see what it generates. Come on. Uh, and then you put a photo real realistic image of a cat with that image. So you're getting it in the shape of that image. Uh, a little silly, but, you know, he's doing this on the fly. But it's just to show you that that with fine tuning these models that, that came out a little wonky uh, <laughs> that you can, you could get the exact poses uh, that you want. So he's making it wave. So there's the astronaut waving just That's like that. Amazing. that so he put cool. a, two astronauts standing on the moon with this pose, just like that. 
So it's it's pretty cool stuff. We'll get to a little bit more about that. Let's see if um, we go back to playground. If my image uh, came up, no, it looks like it 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 gave me the same error again. I think it just wants me to refresh the page, <clears throat> and we're going to upload that image one more time. <clears throat> we are going to just say in a room. We didn't say anything else from what I believe. We had the image. Now we want to put the image strength high and see what happens and see if it gives us an error. Pop style in a room. But again, what's really cool is you can use. Okay, there you go. So the higher yeah. you go, the more it looks like the actual image. All right. And uh, now we didn't do anything here, right? But if, you know, if that's what the whole prompt is, is meant for, I could say talking. Um, let's say talking to people on stage, talking to a room of 1,000 people on stage. Should it be on stage talking yeah. to a room? Because are you going to get 1,000 people on stage? On stage, comma, talking to a room of 1,000 people. Yeah, I, I think it's probably would be able to do it in the context, but this would certainly help. On stage, talking to a room of a thousand people. Um, and now I'm just going to show you something here. I've given you this in the Google Doc. Put this in negative prompts. Text, uh, negative prompts. Um, for, and only use this when you're doing people. Text, signature, title, heading. So you don't want any of this. No watermark, ugly, duplicate, morbid, mutilated, out of frame, extra fingers, mutilated hands, poorly drawn hands, poorly drawn face, mutation, deformed, blurry, bad autonomy, bad proportion, extra limbs, cloned face, disfigured, out of frame, ugly, extra limbs, gross proportions, etc., 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 etc. You simply put this in into these things that say remove from image, we paste. And this and the other one that I showed you, uh, Dream Studio, uh, does this. So now when we we hit um, the scroll down. I'm going to keep this a little bit high, around 80%. And I'm going to click generate. And now we're going to get, who knows if it's going to take that as inspiration and then put him on sale. Oh, we got that stupid error again. Um, that has nothing to do with me. That's simply just uh, maybe you know their servers you know having a problem here. We want that to be the remove. And this was uh, on it's interesting stage. interesting that the higher you're putting this image is when you're reaching, you're getting um, some some feedback uh, and, and you're getting that error when you're putting the image uh, strength as high. Oh, shoot. I left the image strength low. But either way, we're going to we're going to see if it kind of gets that. Uh, no. And uh, and it didn't follow the prompt well. And did it keep it there? OK, uh, I'm going to put Elon Musk. That's really good because. You know, we, we should also tell it it's Elon Musk. And let's say, hey, no, uh, that's the image strength. And over here, prompt guide. Higher values will make your image closer to your prompt. Let's do that. I don't want to do a lot of steps. Stable Diffusion 1.5, I heard, is good. Let's do, just do this and see if we don't get a stupid error. Oh, there it is. Pop start, Elon Musk on stage talking to him with a 1,000 people. And hopefully we don't get an error. No, it timed out again. Mm -hmm. Well, we can also do that with... With the other one, Dream Studio, it's just being a little bit of a baby to me today. Not exactly sure why. Let's continue on what we were saying. Um, let, let's take all of this and see if I can regenerate exactly what, what was there. So we're, we're going to put the, the style to none. Okay. And I'm going to paste everything here. Did I get that right? Intricately, did I, oh, that's the person. So I don't need... Um, I don't need the person's name here. Or maybe if I leave it, it'll, it'll remember that, you know, it, it was drawn there by that user. Uh, let's now take all of this. Oh, copy prompt. Look at that. I don't know if that copies the negative prompt. So I'm just going to, Oh, you could even edit this image. Look at this. Hmm. I yeah, can make can this, my own, this one. my own by clicking edit. Look at that. So cool. I didn't even know that. So now we're going to do the remove paste. Um, go That's here. So we don't need to update an image. Um, I can say how many images I want it to show. Does it show that here? 
if prompt crafting <coughs> is the creativity involved in AI, is an AI platform that shares your prompt, sharing <coughs> your intellectual property. It's a really good It's in the here. terms of service. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, some of these here, Donna, have this. So I could opt out. Images will only be so I can I can uh, opt out, but it's uh, it's pro plan. So I can I can say I don't want people knowing my prompts, hmm. but I could just keep this all private. So let's see if this gives me an error if the server if it does, we're going to be done with playground for today. But hopefully that and so what you'll notice here, I put number of images, I put four. Okay, so look at that. It gave me you got to remember AI is going to. Uh, reinterpret things every time, just like why this one is different than this one is different than this one is different than this one. But I put here sliders, prompt guidance, etc. which the other user, I, maybe I had to look and see what her prompt guidance was. I can even make this a little bit smaller, like if I want, if I'm going to be doing a lot more images and I want the gallery to glow. But I hope you're starting to see, folks, that um, all I did was copy somebody's prompt. Now, take a look at um, this one, I don't think I showed you as well. In this document, we had Leonardo is another company <clears throat> that does the same thing. Now, you guys are going to have to join the wait list. I think it's one of these things that, you know, you got to get an invite, you know, oh, well, now that I can't get in, I want it more. So it took me three days to get accepted. I can launch app and it says, no, you will need to be whitelisted. I say, yes, I'm whitelisted. It's like, oh, yeah? Prove it. Log in with your Gmail, with your Google. And I'm like, okay, I'll do that. And I tried it for three days in a row. And it's like, you haven't been approved yet. But I tried last night. Ha <laughs> ha, look at this. I'm approved. Now, what's really cool about this, Donna, is they have created not just like playground.ai has this, filter. These are just filters. What Leonardo did is said, we're going to do a never ending category like this from the community and our preceded ones. And so you can search for some reason it says search failed. So let's do this here. And so you're going to see that <coughs> these can be considered categories. So this is called deliberate 1.1, whatever in the world that means. But Let's click on it, and I can generate with this model automatically. When I go in, I don't even now have to put the prompt in, and this model generates art that looks like this, okay? But let's get to some more NSFW uh, or SFW, and let's just go into this model called Luna, <clears throat> all right? So um, bear with me a second, guys. I'm going to go off camera here. And I'm going to open up my pictures and see if I can find a picture of one of my cats uh, real quick. And if I can, uh, great. Okay, I found, I found a picture of my cat. It's not the best. I'm just going back a little bit more. Okay, let's, let's use this one. I'm going to double click on it. It's a little blurry. Uh, let, let me go back to the other one because it's more figure of the cat. Let's just use this. It's not the best, but I think that there's some things that I can do. Uh, with it. <clears throat> okay, so this should pull it up right on the screen in about two seconds. All right, this is a picture of my cats. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this to remove background. <clears throat> I don't know if it's going to be smart enough to do that. I doubt it. Let's see if it finds two cats. Well, hey, look at that. It did. So I'm just going to download that. Okay. And so now we're gonna go into Leonardo and I'm gonna click generate with this model and I'm gonna upload an image of the one that I just downloaded of my two cats. And let's click on, so I have to give it a prompt. Uh, two cats sleeping on a blanket. Let's see what happens. If it generates my two little buddies here, these little guys right here, okay? Uh, let's see if it, you know, I removed the background just to get rid of the couch. Maybe I could have left that in. You know, maybe this pillow that was left in the image is gonna mess it up and I could have painted that out. 
Image prompt, not too sure. All right, look, I'd have to play with it a little bit more, but as you can see, this is Scavi and Kenny, right? And it put them in that art style. Again, look, we're gonna, <laughs> uh, there was a terrible picture of my cat. I didn't play around with these guidance scales. I don't know what some of these different things Those do, but- Eyes on that second picture though. <laughs> this one? I mean, at least you'll get a great laugh when you play with image generation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so uh, um, uh, again, I'm using bad images. I probably could have came more prepared uh, to show you some of that, but let's move back on to here. So Leonardo.ai, let's, uh, let's, um, let's go back to the, uh, the front end of that website. Hey, did your alarm go off? Maybe, yeah, 10 yeah, minutes ago. Yeah, we missed ending happy hour. We missed the five minute warning. We'll give you five I'm minutes from now. Disturb. All right, guys. So you've got five minutes to go to uh, groove.ai forward slash replay. And on that page, in five minutes, Don is going to be removing the only chance for today, the only chance for today to back this project with a four payment plan. Other than that, it's a great price of $8.97 or two payments of $4.97. There's only going to be offered two more times, one random time tomorrow for an hour and one random time on Friday. Uh, and that's it. So if you uh, want to guarantee that you can become a backer, go in at groove.ai forward slash replay. Get this now before we hit 1.35 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, that will be gone. And let's just see here. We're going to click the little refresh button and see who got in. Um, all right. Starting from the time we started the, the stream, Rodney Harris, congratulations, got in full pay. Gail Peters at 1224 got in with the, with the happy hour. Mary, Maria Elizabeth Van Nykirk, congratulations. Thank you. Happy hour. Paul Greenwood, happy hour. P Patrick Melander, happy hour. Randy Johnson got in. He's a pitcher for the, uh, for the, used to play for the uh, New York Yankees, Seattle. Oh, just kidding, Randy. Um, Eldon Hamblin got in for the happy hour. Uh, these are right here on the screen. Why don't we just do that? D uh, Danielle Eaton, Jay Shockley got in with the happy hour. Renee Carson got in with the happy hour. Paul Hansen got in with the happy, happy hour. And Burr Grewell, Grewell, Grewell uh, got in as well. So all of these, when we opened up the happy hour, right over here at our first 250. So that would mean... There you go, all in that hour. So if you want to get your name in there, hit the refresh button, see if anybody got in after Burr. Nope. If you want me to say your name, get there in the next two and a half minutes. Open that page up right now and get your prompt in. All right, so get your prompt in, get your, your backer in. Uh, Freudian slip there. Okay, let's get back to the show here. <clears throat> content, content, content. So as we said, Playground AI is a great way to search for prompts for any image and has the styles drop down. And Leonardo is a great way to search for prompts, but they do one additional thing, Donna, that I don't believe that Playground does. And that's this, check this out. This is crazy. They have a search feature. So I could search every type of image that's ever been made to steal the prompt. So I'm just gonna, Steal this that Donna wanted me to create a prompt for later. I'm just going to put a street scene in the Sin City style and see. Um, so, so this is this is the one that will will win me over. Most of our images that we generate uh, in Groove fall into two into three capacities: social images, thumbnails for videos, and thumbnails for our blog. Uh, we use on all of our blogs a style called Sin City which means that the image is converted into black and white. Just a, a, We take stock images, convert them to black and white, and take one element of the image and put it in the brand color. So for Groove.cm, that color is a specific hex code of pink. For Groove.ai, it's a specific hex code of purple. For Groove Growth, it's a specific hex code of green. Um, so if I could generate images like that in AI, that would absolutely convince me that I could use AI-generated images in the company. These are not Sin City, right? They are not. There's too okay. much color in them. <clears throat> yeah, too much color. There was a few yeah. black and white earlier up here, but that's not Sin City, would you call it, right? Because there's no color. We might have to say, okay. uh, <laughs> give me a black and white image of something and then convert the color. 
And, oh, oh, wow. There's something I don't even have in here. You can create your own style, mm -hmm. literally private or public by uploading 15 images. And then you've literally oh. trained it on a style that you can type in any prompt. Awesome. Um, and, yeah. And so let's just see training and data sets, right? So we could literally, Donna, create a new data set, call, give it a name. This is my data set, blah, 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 change the description. And we upload the images and we can have a data set trained on previous styles that we've created. Well, that's right? cool. So, yeah, uh, I'm not going to ask you to go search, you know, for those, you know, those images right now, uh, but but we can actually do that. But let's let's just say that we we want to uh, do something on that style uh, for Sin City. I'm going to go back to the beginning here. Uh, let me just so see. Let's find like an image that you <laughs> might want to use for a blog post about Groove.ai or about an AI thing. Okay, so, so well, let you know what, Donna. Let's start without even any any style. Let's yeah. just use this and say tools, AI canvas, AI image generation. Okay, let's just start again. I don't know if there's a way to clear the canvas. It probably is. Yeah, there's no image here. So this is what you said here. Uh, and I'm just going to type it um, like you have it here. I've got some other things that I can do in mid-journey and stuff, but let's just start with here without a style. <laughs> uh, and I could even start with this. Watch this. Let's go to Google Images and um, tell me if anything that you see, any, any of these in Sin City style? Uh, all of those are like? Sin City style. <laughs> where, where there's um, the black and white with just the red, that is classic Sin City style. So there's just one element of a black this and white right image <laughs> that's highlighted yeah. and put into a brand color. Yep. Okay. All right, so, so let's if we go were back. using this, for instance, on the Groove.ai blog, we would change her lips <clears throat> from red to the specific hex code of purple. Yeah. Now, this isn't Sin City style. Nope. Right? It's now, be I, black I know and white. Yeah. yeah, it's got to be black and white. So uh, I, uh, I, I would probably have to put in there um, black and white. And the hex code is just for the lips, I would assume. So let's refresh this and let's start with an image. I'm just curious. Um, what in the world happened there? Was that the name of the image just downloaded? Yeah, I believe. Uh, let's see. Save image as. Yeah. My, yeah. yeah. Why did that not uh, fully download? Okay. Let's go to my, uh, back to Leonardo. Let's upload an image. There it is. <clears throat> okay. So now the image strength is gonna be low, meaning I don't wanna use much of the image. I wanna use that as the style. I don't want, um, we'll take four pictures, image dimensions, guidance scale. Not sure what all of that stuff means, but we're just gonna put a prompt in. And then I'm gonna just put here Donna's prompt. I'm not gonna put illuminating or anything. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get rid of all of this because it should know the style. Let's see if this helps. Matt Wolf is really good with this stuff and he'd probably be able to tell me how to do it a little bit better. But I think what's really cool is we could just train the image and create our own style. That's why Leonardo.ai is really, really cool. But later we're going to go back, Donna. I know how to do all of this with mid-journey, with the prompts, mm -hmm. with actually typing it in and giving it more information. This we're trying to do with like a, a preset style or a drop-down style or uploading an image to see what comes out. So... Let's see. Okay, we'll we'll come back to this. No sense in you know watching the clock. Uh, uh, did it just come? Oh, okay. Look at this, Donna. Now you tell me if we got a little bit better. Closer. Closer. Um, I wonder if so. The the creator of Sin City is Frank Miller. It's a comic book. Frank right. Miller, who popularized the style. So maybe if we said a street scene in Frank Miller style. Now I could do that two ways. So I'm gonna do it like this, okay, with the image, and I'm gonna do it without the image. Whoops.
I have no image here. So I'm doing it without the image and generating another four. Ooh, I like that Leonardo's letting me, letting me do this. <clears throat> I've got, so Donna, this is with the image. And when I did it with the image, if you remember over here, I, I, I said the guidance scale very low, mm -hmm. meaning um, don't give me a literal interpre interpretation of the image. That would be over here. I just wanted you to use it as a guide for a color palette. And then over uh, in this one over here. I'm so I involved said, with you, Mike. I no didn't image. turn the, the happy hour off. <laughs> no, great. <laughs> All right. So Donna, this is the one with the image as a base. And say, and I said Frank Miller style. Okay. You know, different, different uh, things there. Okay. When I said Frank Miller style, nope. It needed the image as a guidance. So yeah. you were be that's what I like about Leonardo and Playground is you get what's known as image to image prompting, like saying, start with this. And I could use the slider to say literal interpretation or inspirational interpretation. So um, I'm sure if we played around with this step count and guidance count, and then the other thing is, uh, oh, and negative, you know, we could put negative uh, prompts in here as well. I believe, um, do you see a negative? Oh, look at this, none. Not sure what that is. Negative prompt. I could turn it on right here and get some negative prompt. Oh, Magic yeah. prompt. Magic prompt. Our new experience render pipeline that might give more accurate outputs. Try it out. Let us know. Note, image to image works. Okay. All right. Fine. I'll go back to this one that has the image there. I'll turn on the magic prompt. Um, I think it's really important to, to recognize and realize that even these AI companies are still figuring out the best prompts that work for the AI systems. Yeah. So the, the, like basically like it's a Frankenstein monsters problem. We don't know how it's thinking. Mm -hmm. So that's why even in our mastermind, I have these things, um, here in, <clears throat> I believe it would be in the settings where I have different, okay, add relevance weights of each of the above, right? And I didn't want to get too much into it and we have it in other sections in the mastermind, but it's basically, th these things need to be dialed like like a like a equalizer for musicians. Like it, it's it's, do you want grunge or do mm -hmm. you want acoustic, right? Because if you, you just say, I want a cat on a mountaintop. Well, if you don't tell me the style, I, I'm going to give you four random different, uh, different things here. So the magic prompt is going, we're going to come back in just a minute. Uh, so guys, that's Leonardo. So there's a couple of things that I, uh, I'm going to put here in Leonardo that you can train a style on your own images. It has great image to image. I will say that you also have great image to image. Whoops. You have great image to image in uh, playground as well. <clears throat> what I really like about this is they, as we said, they have a search prompt library um, and they have a pre made um, styles. If you want to call them styles made by engine or platform and community. All right, so the Leonardo is some, re oh, here we go, Donna. Didn't give us any color. Didn't give us any color, but that's, there's a little color there. I don't like the magic prompt, quite frankly. Uh, if I were to choose, I don't know which one I like the best. Uh, your thing was a street in Sin City style. I would probably take either this one or this one. And we could actually talk more about the street, right? Like we could say, uh, you know, an interior uh, back street in Manhattan in, you know, in, uh, in Hell's Kitchen, right? You know, we're being a little vague, but if we wanted to actually dial this down, we could start doing some of that uh, as well. And we could do with a telephoto lens, all that stuff that we're going to get into in just a minute. So um, we're getting there. We're getting there. Let's get back to what we can do with with uh with terms what all of this stuff means all right so text to image allows you to generate images from scratch based on a text description prompt that's essentially going in and telling 
the platform explicitly what you want with no additional information. You're not uploading another image as a guide. You're not using a drop down. You're not using anything. Everything is based on the text prompt. Okay. The next thing is something called upscaling. Upscaling is when you get an image. Okay. Let's go into my, mine over here. You get an image and uh, if you like it, we well, you know what's interesting here. Why did this not uh, give me the, oh, because this is an upscale. If you like an image, you can click upscale and it takes this image right here. This one, you can see the blurry background here and it upscaled it and actually gave me a bow effect, a depth of field blur effect there. So that's what's known as upscaling an image. Now, I wanna show you something else that I've given you. I've given you a tool that if there's an image that you have, you can go to this link right here and go to upscale media and you simply drag an image. So we're gonna go get the image that we just got from Elon Musk right here. And I'm gonna drag that right onto the page, just like that. Well, it wants me to do it again. Drop image anywhere. And what it just did, guys, I don't want to pay for this. It just took this image, and I can even upscale it 4x. And it might ask me to pay here. Let's see. Enhance quality on. Why not? Let's go for it. Processing image. And so apparently what's going on here is it's basically taking, uh, and I guess this is, oh, the, so I'll just go to the, the hairs right here. And you can see on the, uh, on the picture on the right, the original compared to the upscaled. So if you have an old picture that you took in 2011 on your iPhone 5 and, you know, it was, you know, at, at low resolution and slightly, you know, off, you could take any photo that you want. Maybe you took a screenshot off of Facebook. You can now upscale it. And now you could use that because, you know, you put it on your website. And when you blew it up as a background image for your hero image, it kind of was a little blurry. Well, you could even see here um, how it fine tuned little things just like that from the original to here. So let's just get these hairs here. We'll look at the eyes. Okay, that uh, the eye does it the best. You can see, so this is free. Now I click download image and I can now take this image right here and you can see it's now made it a larger image than let's, let's open up this one here. Okay, <clears throat> look at the difference there. I took this image, and if I make this image as big as the other, you can actually see it's a little bit blurrier. It's actually a little bit blurrier, okay? You can't see the, the fine details in the, in the hair that you can see here. And so that's a pretty cool tool, upscaling an image. So I hope you're getting some value out of this, guys, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Mike Keenings would always tell me, oh, Donna, you didn't see that. You stepped away. So let me show you this. <laughs> this is the final output. This is the original picture that we got off the internet. And this is the picture like this. So if we wanted to use this as a background image or something or put it in Canva or a YouTube thumbnail video, uh, we, we're actually getting much better quality. And you could see when I make this one as large as that one, the, the truth is in the eyes. So look at the difference in the, in the two eyes. I'm going to put them side by side to give you uh, an example um, of the differences. So we're going to pull this over. And this I'm going to pull onto here. The one on the right is the previous version. So now we're going to zoom in on this. And as we zoom in, you can see, look at the upscaling, free tool. I mean, I think that's pretty cool. So, you know, if you're going to do something and you're going to use it in AI as an image to image, you know, maybe you want to upscale your image first or you could upscale the image after it comes out. I think, I think this is some pretty fascinating uh, technology. I, I really do. Like, the, you know, you have that old photo, your old wedding photo that you scanned, you know, from, from 1994 and you put it into your scanner and it's got all, you can literally upload that image and then turn it into a 4K image. So again, I hope you're getting some, uh, some, some uh, good uh, information out. We're going to move on, continue with the terms. Upscaling, 
Um, more like this and re-rolling. Uh, so as we said before, when you're in Discord, um, this, if, I, if I'm looking at an image and I say one, two, three, four, and I click version four and I click on this, that is going to give me more like that. I have the re-rolling with a prompt, which means before you re-roll, allow me to put another prompt in here, like I said, with sunglasses, or I can just say, give me four more. That's called re-rolling, right? Uh, next is called blending images, taking two photos and morphing them into one photo. All right, let's do that. Um, let's take Tony Robbins. <coughs> I don't think Tony's going to come suing me. So I'm just going to take a nice photo of Tony Robbins. It's kind of blurry. So let's, uh, let's copy this image. And I'm just going to see if I can actually just click paste right on the website. So I'm going to go to this upscale image here. I'm going to click upload an image. Uh, let me see here. Uh, so they don't they don't have the paste, right? Oh, I just clicked paste. I just clicked control V and it uploaded the image. How awesome. I literally just hit control V on the web page and it's uploading the picture. So it's processing, Tony. We're going to get a better upscale image of it. And as soon as I do that, I want to get a URL for it. Okay, so this is the original. Let's look at Tony's teeth. Okay, you can see it really upscaled that really nice. So I'm gonna download this image. Okay, I've got an image of Tony Robbins. And who do we wanna mix Tony Robbins with, Donna? You, you, we could, I, let's not do it with another human. Let's do it with any character in the world of fantasy. Tigger. Just, Tigger? Tigger. Tony Robbins is Tigger, don't you think? Okay, now do you want Tigger with Tony Robbins features or Tony Robbins with Tigger's features? I want Tony Robbins with Tigger's features. <laughs> All right. This is going to be interesting. I'm just going to save this right here. I'm not going to upscale it. Let's not get fancy. Uh, this is more demo stuff. All right. So I'm going into my mid-journey server. Now, let me see if I can remember how to do this. I think I have to do slash blend two images together. Now, Donna, you said you want Tony Robbins to be the hero with yes. features of Tigger. Yes. So I'm going to, I think everybody is on their toes right now to be like, get out of here. I got to see this. I think I put these in my downloads. Um, there's Tony. All right, everybody, we're going to take Tony Robbins and uh, we're going to put Tigger's features in here. And just like this, I'm not going to give it any additional prompt. I'm just going to hit enter. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe what we're about to do here. Two <laughs> upload, um, two files up uploading failed. Uh, why did they fail? Hmm. Uh, okay, imagine, no, blend. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's try this. Maybe maybe my upscale of Tony is, is too large? No, it would have told me. And let's get Tigger one more time. Oh, was it because it's a WebP? Maybe. No, well, it's getting it. Four more. Um, let me see. Do I type here? Why am I getting a fail? Oh, I'm in Blue Willow. Am I? Let me just see. <clears throat> no, I'm in my Mid Journey bot. Hmm. I'm in Mid Journey. I'm sure somebody's saying, Mike, you're forgetting you have to do this or something. Um, or maybe I'm doing copyrighted images. Could that be a problem? I don't think it would be. The, oh, you know what? Let's, uh, let's just quit the application. It says it didn't respond. So, Mike, I just lost your audio. You muted. Mike. Mike. Unmute Mike. Can I do that? I can't unmute you. Mike, you're muted. Mike, you're muted. Muted. Mike. <laughs> Mike is not hearing me. Okay. There we go. Yeah, we, we don't hear you at all. No sound, no, nothing. <laughs> all right. Well, Mike is catching up. We're waiting to hear him. We hear, I'm just going to, I'm just going to do this until we hear Mike so he can hear that we don't hear him. I don't know if he hears me. 
Um, so I don't know what happened. Nope, still don't hear you, Mike. Are you guys hearing Mike? Is it? It's is it? It's not me, right? <laughs> Mike, you actually look like you're muted on StreamYard. Oh, and there he goes. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Mike just uh, refreshed his screen. Uh, so uh, we're just going to hang out and wait until he returns. All right. And, can you hear me now? Yes. Got you now. I think something I pressed hit mute either in the browser or on my computer or whatever the case was. It and looked I don't... like in StreamYard itself. You had the muted microphone in oh, the front. Oh, so all I had to do was click the little thing like that. All right, let's get my screen back in. Welcome back. Thank you. Sorry about that. And gosh, no I got to tell you, Donna, like with, without a co-pilot, you could be going for 20 minutes and people saying, we're not hearing you. You're not hearing you. We're not hearing you. We're not hearing you. <laughs> that right, is so why we're... this is the highest and best use of my time right now. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So we're going to go back to MidJourney, my own private surfer. Uh, that I got here, and I am going to now try the blend feature. So I just do splash to get all the different things. Uh, don't worry about all this weird technology. This is, that's Discord. We're going to put this image of Tony. We're going to put this image of this person here. I'm going to just hit the Enter button. And two uploading images failed, and it's not telling me why. So I honestly, Donna, don't know if it's Tigger or whatever the case is. So I'm going to try this image here. And I'm just going to download it. Oh, that's, uh, I'm just going to get this image here and see if maybe it's, I can't imagine like you can't upload Tigger. Uh, and I'm also going to upload the lower resolution of Tony Robbins, I think, uh, which let's see, do I have that? No, I don't. All right. So let's see what happens here. Blend. <clears throat> We're going to take um, Tony and we're going to take uh, this result right here. All right, so it's definitely not a copyright issue. And uh, bear with me for a second. We're going to go to uh, YouTube uh, Mid Journey Blend. I'm gonna scrub through and see if I'm maybe supposed to put like a command or something in here. So, okay, the person is uploading an image. Okay, let's see the two images that they upload. Okay, that's image one, image two. He's finding images, clicks open. All right, so now what is he doing? He just hit enter and it blended the two images. So I honestly don't know folks why that's not working. That would have been a really, really cool demo. I, I just can't tell you what, um, let, let me, let me try, let me try not using Tony Robbins. Let's try uh, Elon Musk. Okay. Maybe the image was just uh, too high. I don't know. So we're going to do um, not an image prompt. We're going to do a blend prompt. And we are going to try with Elon Musk. And we're going to try with the Sin City. And so there's nothing really copyright here. And hit enter. Oh, look at that. <coughs> Donna, there was maybe the Tony Robbins picture was, was too much memory. It too large, 12, yeah. 12.5 megabytes. That's what it was. Let me get another Tony Robbins image <laughs> now. Offline, that's exactly what it was. We're simply going to get Tony over here. Uh, and we're just going to use a regular screenshot of Tony Robbins, just like that. That's very low and we can do it. Sorry, guys. You know, I didn't realize how if you look at like the size, when I upscaled that image, most of my images are 75 K. We went to 12 megabytes. <laughs> Basically, Mid Journey is saying, you know, dude, I'm not storing your image, you know, at the size of a YouTube video here. <clears throat> so, OK, this is basically that lady and Elon Musk put together. So Donna, the blend feature is pretty cool too. Like, right? If you want to take you, you a picture of somebody on our team and then upload it with a Sin City background, we could you could get something like that as well. So now we're going to do a blend, okay, of what we originally wanted. Uh, we're going to take uh, Tony Robbins right here with Tigger, 
And Tigger's only 22 kilobytes, man. I don't, I don't think we're going to have a problem with that unless it doesn't like WebPP. And if it doesn't, then I'm simply going to take a screenshot of that and hit enter. Ah, we're good. Donnie, you're going to get your dream come true. And we're going to do the same thing again. That's exciting. We're going to do a blend, a blend prop the opposite way. We're going to, we're going to make Tigger look like Tony Robbins. <clears throat> I know this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! <clears throat> All right. So this is this was Elon Musk as the woman. Uh, you know, let's look into that and zoom in. And that's pretty it's not interesting. Bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty interesting, right? Uh, okay, I just got a beep beep noise. So something just generated. Uh, oh, this one came in first. So I forgot which one. Um, this is this is. Tigger is Tony Robbins. That didn't come out very, very good. Uh, and let's see uh, this one here. Well, there's Tony as Tigger. They, uh, it literally kept a very literal interpretation. It, yeah. There's no slider there. There's different ways where you can put like, like a weight, like uh, 80 uh, on top of these things. I'm not that very good at it. But if we were to do more just things that blend well together, as you can see here, you could get things like that. You know, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look uh, like this. I'm going to look for Mike Filsaim on my computer. All right. While you're doing that, Mike, there is an entire side discussion happening in the community right now about the capacity, the ability to use AI generated images in print on demand products for our Groovecart users. Uh, if you can talk about some ideas of ways to use it for our groove cart members that would be great sure absolutely uh and uh, yeah and the beautiful thing is guys you can you know all of these images are your images and royalty free so why am i not getting any mic pngs let's see i should have let's just do png any images of me here okay here's an image of me okay let's just take this okay so i'm going to Go into my Discord. I'm going to click blend. I'm going to drag that image over to Discord. And I'm going to do that Sin City style. Maybe this will make Donna happy. Let's see. Oh, the problem is the, the, the style is with the woman. So I would have to, I have to get Sin City style. Palette. Okay. And let's see if I get it go into images, if there's like a palette style. Interesting, interesting, interesting. I don't know if this is going to work down. I have no idea, but I'm going to save this image and see if that palette can be used as a style. And then we're going to move on and we're going to move on. All right. So I've got this and let's just, let's just throw this palette onto me and see what happens. <clears throat> All right. So while that's in, uh, generating, we're going to get back to the document. And so we just went over blending images and you can have a lot of fun. Just, just go to YouTube like I did and le learn how to do uh, image blending. It's really, really cool stuff. Uh, and then the next thing that we're going to discuss is something called out painting. This lets you expand your creation beyond the border of any image. Inch by inch, you can draw new AI-generated generated frames that blend into the picture by matching the original color palette and style. So I'm going to show you exactly uh, what that means. So I just got the beep from Discord. <coughs> so that didn't work very, very well, obviously. So I would, I would have to actually use like a Sin City art style or something to get that. So forget that blend one. That didn't work. Uh, but let's move on. We did the blending. Let's focus on outpainting. Uh, and let me show you how that works right here. We can do that in Leonardo, I believe. And I can um, upload an image. So let's see, where's the image upload? Right here. Uh, let's start with, um, <clears throat> let's see a Picasso. Oh, um, um, a Van Gogh. Is that a Van Gogh painting? 
Van Gogh. Yeah. Surprised that it suggested like that. So let's take one of his paintings. Let's just do this, for example. I'm going to take this painting. I'm going to save it to my hard drive. It's just an example. But this can be done with anything, uh, anything that you have. So now we're going to go to Leonardo, and I'm going to see if I can um, upload from computer my downloads. Why did my Van Gogh not show up? There it is. Okay. <clears throat> That's a little strange. And I believe this is on lock. There's, there is a way to outpaint this. Let's unlock that. And I'm just going to click generate and see. Uh, this is draw, erase, upload image, uh, download artwork. Let me just see if I click generate right here. Um, so I'm going to demo this for you guys. Remember I said I'm not an expert at all of this stuff, but I'm going to show you basically uh, how that um, how that works. I think I had a video on that, but let's just go to um, outpainting with Leonardo or a playground. Outpainting. Let's just do stable diffusion. I want to show you essentially what uh, what outpainting is. So we're going to take. Let's just go with this tutorial, and you'll see that an image is going to be put in. Okay. Just like this. Okay. And then what you're able to do is take the square. This is what I was just trying to do right now. Let's go full screen. And by, by going with the square, you just make the square around it and then you hit something and it just starts automatically out painting anything. Now you could put prompts. So you start with an image and it could literally create a painting around it. Let's do another version of that. Let's see this one right here. Uh, out painting. So this person, it starts with this picture right here and he's just, you know, uh, putting on the top, on the bottom, and it just literally starts, you know, painting around it. Let's look at one more. And as you can see here, the person is just basically just clicking in an area and it starts creating paintings around it. But I want to do out painting with, let's do first with a playground.ai. Playground AI in painting. All right, so let's do uh, with Leonardo uh, AI. See if anybody's got any videos on that. Uh, create uh, with in paint and out paint. Yeah, so this person right here, as a nice video. So we're going to start with, um, let's see here. He looks like he's going to pull a car in onto the canvas. And let's see what he's doing right now. He's doing something in Leonardo. I'm not exactly sure. Oh, he's just moving the box like that. Okay, so there he is moving the box. Oh, you have to type a prompt. You have, to, you have to type a prompt so it knows if you want more buildings or a person standing on a street. And then you cl simply click on a prompt and look at that. It outpaints, it, it creates a, a bigger portion of the painting for you. So again, just more different things. If you ever hear outpainting, just know that, that this stuff exists. Let me, let me just see if I can uh, do that here. Um, let, let's just edit this painting and see if I can do an outpainting to it. There's a mask. We're in play. Oh, we're not in. Uh, we're not in uh, Leonardo. So let's go back to Leonardo, and let's do a prompt here. Um, um, sky at night. I don't know, guys. I've never done this. Maybe I could make this block a little bit bigger, and that's essentially what's going to happen. And I could have maybe made the block is a little bit bigger, but this is essentially out painting. So while that's generating, all right, there you go. You can see, um, now I don't know what this means. I, maybe I can go another quarter in the, oh, these are different images that I put in. Let's say I click accept. Let's see, can I make this? Yeah, there you go. 
Let's go right here and see what the interpretation of that is. And I'm sure I could probably make this, uh, this bigger. Let's see what that does. No, that simply moves in on the canvas. But this is out painting. I'm not that great with understanding how to make, like you, you saw, you can make that box a little bit bigger. It's really cool feature. If you watch some videos on Outpainting, you'll get more. My job here today was to show you that this technology exists, that if you have you know, you know, a dragon sitting at the top of, um, let's, let's see the different variations that it, it's tried to stitch onto here, right? I kind of like the first one. Uh, if you have a dragon sitting on top of a, uh, of a building, you can now start outpainting if you got that on Google and just completely start building that out. But I want to get into some more stuff about, especially about making realistic photos and things like that. So we just went over outpainting. What does that do? It lets you expand the creation. Uh, sketch, I'm not going to get too much into that. I kind of showed you that with Donna. That allows you to draw a cat or a turtle or draw something on your iPad for a prompt for a, um, uh, a pose. And then you can do the text to it. I also showed you that there's some videos that you could watch here where you could you could put the image of uh, of uh, of like as you see here on the left, there's an image of a woman, and then you upload a picture of you, and you'll get you in that same exact pose. And Donna was saying she was struggling with that. I'm not the expert in the in these things, folks, but these videos are going to show you step by step, and you can just follow that. I showed you the upscaling tool. That's where you could take any image that you have and upscale it you know, to 4K or 8K. I made a really huge file. And I also showed you how you could remove the background of any uh, image that you want. So one of the things that uh, I, I showed you is that at both Leonardo, at their main site, you can, you can find these communities uh, that are creating these different uh, images. And you could, uh, you could go image to image. You could start right from here. I could click this and let's just upload my picture, right? I'm just going to go image to image. And um, is there a way for me to upload my image and do it in this image? Because they call it image to image. I guess not. I would have to do another, another prompt. But that's pretty cool. You can start with the image or you could start with the prompt by simply clicking on that image and copying all of this stuff by clicking copy prompt or remix. So it's, it's really cool. It's a great way to start. And as you're seeing, you're seeing me struggle because I'm not a prompt genius with this stuff, but I, we haven't really dove into all of these different uh, things that are here and all of these different things. So what we're going to do, Donna, can you get um, an image for me that, um, oh, you know, we're not going to do an image. We're going to start with some of the stuff that you wanted before, but can you get me some specific things? But let's start with this in the meantime. Oh, I didn't show you. Guys, this is Flow GPT. I have this up here. This is a free site. And this is the premier platform for optimizing workflow. And your prompts over here, you've got all these different things for images, chat GPT, everything. So here, if you wanted um, resume editing, well, you just click here and look, I want you to act as a resume writer. So prompt engineering and this stuff is free. It's upvoted. Academic essay, job cover letter, plagiarism checker. All right. So you put in, I want you to act as, and then you says, okay, according to this. And then you paste in the information. So Flow GPT is a really, really cool place. Let me just see if they have um, images. <clears throat> I don't know. It looks like it's uh, all for ChatGPT, hence the name FlowGPT. But it's just another resource for you to find different things. And again, there's a place called PromptBase. Okay, I paid $1.99 for one of these things. And that's how I was able to create my Pixar image of myself. But uh, Donna, watch this, right? This is Sin City, <clears throat> is what you said. Okay, so I'm going to pay $1.99. I'm going to just buy this prompt. Um, I believe I can sign in. I already have an account with them and it should have my credit card on file. And if not, I'm gonna have to take this offline. What am I in the wrong browser or something? Why doesn't it have Micah Group Digit? Oh, there it is. So I'm gonna download a style. Ooh, you know, I didn't see, I should have checked. 
uh, just sent me a code to my phone. Let's do that. Let's see. Copy code, paste. Okay. Let's see. <clears throat> All right, so now I own this prompt. I paid $1.99 for it, Donna. The mistake that I made is I didn't check to see who the prompt was for, but guess what? It's from MidJourney. So now this is what I paid two bucks for, but it basically says to, to just use this prompt, uh, extra prompt instructions, example of an algorithm, blah, 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 and I'll be able to generate prompts like this. So where... In a 300 movie style, two in blue, overcast, hyper-realistic. What's funny is it doesn't use that guy Miller or whatever you said. Yeah, or, Frank or that. Miller or Sin yeah. City. Um, yeah, it's not a very big prompt as well. Yeah, no, mid-journey doesn't need to be. Yeah. That's the interesting thing about this. So let's just see if I can go into mid-journey here. Uh, and, you know, let's uh, go imagine... Um, a personal animal. Um, let's just put. Uh, what What does fighting mean? I don't know. It's a good question. Male in a three hundred movie style, in blue. I guess the color. Oh, Donna, you wanted red, and I could put the hex code, but I'm just going to put red. All right. Well, the let's... overcast actually would be blue, because it's it's generally a black and white style, but cold, so would have a a blue tone overcast to it and then a single color highlighted. Oh, should I, uh, uh, let's, you can try I leave it blue. Yeah. What do you think? What, what see what it gets. See what you get. Okay. Now I, I got to actually put a male, but we wanted just a street. So that's why I put male. Yeah. Right. But like, you know, but if we wanted to get, you know, a person sitting in a coffee shop, smoking a cigarette, then that's what we would do. And it would, it would give us that. So it's generating. I, I don't believe this prompt is going to work. Like I, I, I truly do not believe it right now. Let's find I'm out. I'm going to be blown away if you. it works. Look at this weird picture of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of freaking me out. I'm going to delete this thing. I don't like it. <laughs> let's, let's. Uh, we were we playing with this one day time. at Mike's house and he, he blended me and a cat and his cat image. And they were some very disturbing it. images. I could show it, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> we scrolled through it really fast. All right. It says waiting to start. Is it just. Uh, yeah, that happened. So we're just. We're, yeah, that. No, that's that's mid journey. I'm in a queue. So. Um, all right. So, Donna, I'm going to put this in. Everything from here is going to be in mid journey. All right. And uh, let me, while we're doing this, let me just get you all of these as well. I'm, we're just going to go to Matt's channel. Uh, all right. We're going to put uh, MRE flow. We're going to go back a little bit. I should be able to find the video that shows you all of these different styles. Let's go like this. It was a couple of weeks back. Chat GPT text to 3D world. Okay. GPT, this is how you fool. Mid journey got an upgrade. Voice cloning, the single AI prompt built this website, text to speech, creating AI generated logos, chat GPT, 3D mid journey tools, mid journey light tools, uh, find the next insane AI tool using AI to generate text and video. Try this simple trick next time you use mid journey. This could be it. So I'm going to uh, go in and see if this is the, all the different styles. I think that it is. Let me see if. He gives us that stuff in here. No, um, but I believe these are the different styles. Uh, and I can just listen to him talk here for a second. You have uh, the one that's that's highlighted on the top, advanced prompting guide. That looks like it's showing the, the very top of your list on the right. Ooh, looks like uh, it's this is another one. <clears throat> um, yeah, let me see. I can look by the prompts. I, th yeah, retro television. Yeah, yeah, this is it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Donna, genius, you found it. I'm good like that. It no, it, it's actually not this one. This is a good one. I'm just gonna link this in the document. It was actually the other one. 
Uh, so let's just go uh, here. I believe the doc. Bottom is. line, guys, everything Matt Wolf does, you'll wanna you'll wanna consume if you're interested in anything Oops. AI. Uh, and he should be on tomorrow. At yeah, some he's point, we don't know tomorrow. when he's joining us, but at some point tomorrow, he should be joining us. Okay. The important thing is, I want to get you to understand what the heck is in this document. Okay. So by by understanding what's in this document, you, you can look at this document as a resource guide, knowing that I am not an expert, but we are, we are learning a lot here. All right. So this, I believe, was the video where, ooh, what just happened to it? I think I just closed it. So it was, try this simple trick next time, right? Let me just see, like me journey. Yeah. All right. So let's open this back up. I believe this was giving me uh, different styles of, uh, of these people, or maybe not. I'll have to go back and look for it. Let me see what his. Yeah, no, this isn't it. So I'll come back later and get you the exact video where I learned about uh, he, where I learned about all of these different things. He gave an example of every single one of these. And I was just absolutely blown away. Donna, you were actually there watching that. That's when Michelle was like, oh, go back to that one. Go back to that one. Go back to that one. That was that video. So I have to, I'll go back later and find it. Okay. I heard a beep in my discord and yeah. So I don't know what that said fighting. So I guess the, 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 the ver th this is actually something else that we would have to put in there as well. But you were right, we didn't get what we want, but don't don't worry, we're gonna do it our own way like this. So let's close some of this stuff out and let's just focus on the final prompts in Mid Journey. So I'm gonna put this prompt in uh, right here, Donna, um, and see if I get something very realistic. And then if I do, this is what we can do to, re to uh, replace it. So we're gonna just put imagine This kind of uh, unrecognized argument. Uh, okay, so something, uh, what happened here? Uh, I think I have to do this. All right, let's see if, if it can find it. Let, let's see, if not, there was something that it doesn't like. Okay, <laughs> it was literally the two dashes. So these are little commands that you tell it like what version, what, um, you know, what aspect ratio and different things like that. So uh, let's, while we're doing that, Donna, let's create, and I have to actually fix that right here. I have to do that here for all of you guys in, in this one. So Donna, let's take this. Let's just create a new document real quick and let's play Mad Libs, okay? And let's not try to do something for the company. Let's just, you know, uh, try to do something, you know, impressive, right? So mm -hmm. what do we want to do? An animal, person, object, car, you know, uh, you know, a woman. Let, we'll just throw some random things in. Um, so we're going with a portrait. So it has to be a mm -hmm. person. No, it could be a car. Even I know it's portrait, portrait. but yeah. It, it, it's, yeah. So, okay. So do you want to do... Uh, describe a type of person. Sure. Like a waitress. A waitress. A 50s diner waitress with a beehive hairdo. 50s diner waitress with a beehive, one word or two? One word. Hairdo is one word or two? One word. Like that? Yep. Okay, we're going to get rid of the braces now. Okay. All right. Um, where is she? In a diner? In, behind the counter? Behind, behind the, the counter. counter of diner? Yeah, behind okay. the diner counter. A counter in a diner. Okay. <laughs> that's okay. all that we need. And I heard the beep, by the way. So uh, let's see if that thing that I'm about to tab over to doesn't look good, then nothing's going to look good. Okay, look at that. So this prompt allows us to create realistic photos like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're simply going to take what that prompt that we just did, and we're gonna put that into Mid Journey the way that Donna just said. So I'm gonna go imagine, boom, just like this, and we're gonna get another one. Now, while we're doing that, I wanna show you another prompt that you can do. And we're gonna take what Donna just gave us here, 
And I'm not going to do any of this stuff here, uh, clear facial images, nothing. I'm simply going to take this. I'm not going to put version four, anything. I'm going to put simply this, Polaroid. <laughs> now, Polaroid is just a style that's realistic and vintage. Okay, it's very 1970s. But it is a style, so I want to show you some cool things that can be done. And guess what, Donna? We got a prompt. We got a boop. Okay, <clears throat> so there we go. There is – what. so let's see what we asked for. A portrait of a 50s diner waitress in a beehive hairdo uh, in behind the counter in a diner with clear facial features, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what do you think, Donna? Uh, I don't think those are technically beehive hairdos, but otherwise not bad. Yeah, Right? Yeah. And, and then a plus on the clear facial features, the fact that it's a portrait, you can see we're, we're in portrait mode, basically, clear facial images and a diffused background. Yeah. And what we said was one, you know, uh, th this a cinematic uh, lens, I think some of them sometimes say uh, you can change. So the other thing is you can change the lens and the aperture uh, mm -hmm. of those different things that also give you, you know, that that stuff. So. We're going to now do the same prompt and simply, I remember to hit imagine, simply click Polaroid. Let's fix the typos in here with a beehive hairdo behind the counter in a diner. Polaroid. Okay. That's this. Now, the, the interesting thing is here, um, we, can, we can say side profile, shot from above, Mm -hmm. Shot from below, um, you know, uh, twenty feet away. A different, literally, you, you, wearing literally diamond earrings. Portrait. Yeah, exactly. All sorts of things. All right. So this is this simple prompt here. All we did was say we wanted the same thing, but we wanted it as as a Polaroid, right? So <laughs> I think that we can say simply just say shot on shot on an iPhone twelve. Uh, we might as well just try it. Okay. Oh my gosh, Donna. Yeah. Is this done? Look, look at that. They're not beehives. I, I, you know, I guess it doesn't fully know a beehive, but talk about realistic, right? People that say you can't get realistic photos from mid journey. Come on. This is some pretty good stuff. And then you could take this photo and I could remit. Okay. Watch this. Watch this. Watch, 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 watch. We're going to get excited. Donna, which one of these do you like? You want me to them right? Yeah, this the one that looks like Nikki Zamora, that one. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to say version four. I'm going to now add one of these things here. And I'm going to add... <clears throat> Who's the one that you said, Donna? Charlie, you didn't say Charlie Harper, right? I did not. What's the name of the guy you said? Frank Miller. Okay. No, no, the other one. Uh, oh, uh, Rory Lichtenstein, that guy. Okay. Here, let me get Rory you spelling of that. Lichtenstein. Yeah. Is it Rory? You said there he is. Roy. No, it's Rory. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay, that's it. him. Okay, so I'm just gonna do this. Um, this I think some of these things are supposed to be. You might have to fix these AR guys because it's supposed to be exactly like this. So I've got. Some things in here that aren't perfect. This is supposed to be, that was 3-2, I believe. But I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to remix this in a Roy Lichtenstein. Okay. I don't know if that's going to, if I can literally just, uh, I think, no, um, I'm going to do comma Roy Lichtenstein uh, like that. All right, let's see what happens. I'm going to leave. I think I could get rid of the Polaroid because I'm actually remixing that image. But I'm going to just do this and see what happens. So I'm using version four. I'm not upscaling it. <clears throat> All right. Here's another one I want to do, Donna. I want to do the same exact thing that we just did with version four. Let me see if I can click it right now. I can. And I'm going to say... Comma, no, uh, comma, Sin City instead of Roy Lichtenstein, just to see what happens. 
just you know, no other additional prompts right there. Let's just, and I'm gonna put aspect ratio 16 by nine. <laughs> no idea what's about to happen. Um, did we get kind of that guy style? Did you say that's Roy Lichtenstein? I think parts of it, yeah. Yeah, not bad. I mean, I see some, so telltale style for him are flat colors with like polka dots and lines and, you know, graphic yeah. elements in it. And I think that there's some of that in there. Yeah, the Sin City one didn't work. No. Uh, I would probably have to put black and white, you know, uh, in, you know, in there or something like that. But, um, or Frank Miller. So let, let's do that. Let's, let's do it like again. I feel like there might be, so in, in Photoshop, if you want to take a, um, and I'm not a Photoshop user, so I apologize in advance to anyone who is a Photoshop user and would be able to say this better than I can. Um, but I know that you can create workflows where if you want to bring an image through a very specific defined process, you can create all those steps and run it like a, like a series of commands. And I wonder if that type of thing would have to be done to get exactly what I'm looking for, which means you know, first generate a black and white image, then identify something in the image that I want to be in the brand color and have it convert that item in the image. Because uh, that would be closer if we took something and said, okay, generate an image, give it to me in black and white, and then identified something within that image that we want. Yeah, so Turned here I put Frank Miller. Frank Miller. I did, that's the guy you said, right? Yes, yeah. Okay, I didn't do that last time. Uh, I, I put Sin City, black and white, red lips. So this one we're gonna we're gonna uh, remix there. Uh, this one here was, uh, yeah, the Sin City we did, we just didn't like. So I re-rolled that. But let me show you another one that we can do with like um, uh, retro wave or a uh, synth wave. Uh, that shouldn't be bold. All right. Why that character is there like that. Okay, we're gonna do a re-roll on this one here, the main, main one that we said was pretty good. Uh, so we'll re-roll version four one more time. And I'm going to put um, retrowave. Uh, that's it on that one. And throw that into the queue. <clears throat> All right, not quite Frank Miller, right? You, you've you obviously got to get in there and start training the style. I said red lips, black and white. It didn't get it. I think the Polaroid might need to come out. Uh, again, I'm not an expert at this. Now, this one we did retro wave just to come up with something that pops. And again, that's what these things here, Synthwave, Duotone, 1990s point and click, 16-bit adventure game uh, <laughs> can give you. So this is really nice. This added a nice little, a nice little filter. I really like this one up here in the uh, image number two. is really, really cool. But that's to show you that we could get some pretty cool uh, realistic things. So now uh, let's go back to um, getting, these are just some example prompts. If you want to do National Geographic, I'm gonna, we're gonna start from scratch again. So clean prompt, just start with imagine. And Donna is gonna play fill in the blanks here. All right, Donna, animal. <clears throat> Giraffe. Giraffe. Uh, shot from what direction? From a uh, worm's eye view. Can, can you do that? Yep. We need an M in worm's eye. I don't eye. even think, I don't even think I need the, uh, the shot from, uh, I can, I think I can just go from worm's eye view. Uh, and I think that's fine. Um, pose. Um, not sure what that means, but what, uh, yeah, we could say drinking water or, uh, feeding, feeding, eating, eating leaves, maybe. Right. Time of day. Let's do sunset. Um, or, or let's do golden hour. I know that I was that just is about to say that <laughs> golden hour, National, National Geographic. Like, I like watch, that. Watch this guy. Uh, do you want one giraffe? One giraffe. Okay. Let's go. Uh, again, I think this wouldn't be as interesting if I was just showing you things that you could do. Um, but what I'm actually doing is saying, hey, you've got this. So here's another one right here. This is where I got the golden hour from. I'm going to give another prompt here that I stole this from. 
I literally just stole this. And I said, well, I'm going to just basically do, you know, this type of stuff here. So we're going to do another imagine prompt while that's working <clears throat> and just go here, just like this. Now, Donna said worm's eye view. So this is kind of like when the animal looks into the camera and mm -hmm. sniffs and fogs the lens, but it's kind of like what we're getting. It's only at 62%. So it should get more realistic uh, when we get, uh, when we get completely done. 93 Interestingly, what I would expect from saying worm's eye view is, is an upward shot of a very, very tall uh, giraffe, the full body, but we're getting, we're getting a giraffe yeah. portrait back. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Cause we, yeah, exactly. Well, look, that's pretty interesting. I guess with the prompt uh, we could, we could say, you know, the pose, you know, gi giraffes next uh, extended to the top of a tree. Yeah. Right. Uh, but These there we go. That's, giraffes, a, that's a worm's eye view, right? Gotta say. Yeah. Yeah, and then we could take these images, and so watch what we're going to do here. I'm going to take this. Uh, look at the look at these. Look at these. <clears throat> Come on, version four looks like something right out of the Lion King. Lion King, right? So this this is really nice. And then so what's nice is starting with a prompt like this. I'm going to take which one of these do you like, Donna? I like the lower uh, version three. Version three, that's this one. So I'm gonna remix this and I'm gonna add this prompt right here. Um, 1990s point and click 16 bit adventure game. Uh, so I'm gonna get rid of National Geographic. I'm, I'm actually just gonna leave it. And, ooh, I left out film type? Oh yeah. Ooh, like interesting. Uh, so what film type did he use last time? So I'm going to use this. I don't know, really know what that means. And then I'm going to add this. <clears throat> That's or maybe I'm going to replace the National Geographic or should I leave that? I'll leave that and I'm just going to add this. Okay. Agfa Vista is a film. All right. <clears throat> All right, Donna, this is this giraffe. We're going to see if this thing, like maybe I had to get rid of National Geographic and before I had to get rid of Polaroid and then just swap that for the style. But who knows? Who knows? All right. And, and so, folks, you can do that with uh, uh, as a playful 3D animated male character or female or animal character studio lighting. So we're going to do one more. Yeah, I think we were already, confusing yeah. it on the last one with both the National Geographic and the 16-bit adventure game. Those are very diametrically opposed styles. So Yeah, so if, if this if this one kind of comes out a little strange, I'll remix it simply by replacing the style right here. All right. And uh, let's see. Mid Journey seems to have crashed. Because uh, I heard I heard the boop and it won't let me get in there. So that's a, a Discord problem. So we'll write the prompt while this is reloading. <clears throat> We're going to be wrapping up and probably calling it a day, but I did tell some people that I would give you my audacity, audacity um, walkthrough. Okay. Wasn't sure whether you're going to do that today or tomorrow. Perfect. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's really quick. Really, really quick. All right. So I should be able to go back into here and that art should be uh, done. So I think you're right, Donna that it's it's competing with with the um the the national geographic so what we're going to do is we're going to take this which image do you like the, this one sure okay we're going to version for that one we're going to get rid of the national geographic and we are going to put in this but why not Pixar, right? I mean, this should be, this should be. So I would take out the film too. Yeah. Um, the, the, this right here. Yeah. Cause you wouldn't use film on a 3d right. animated. All right. You're 100% right. Let's see. <clears throat> and I've given you some really, uh, there's a video that I'm going to put in here. It's going to be demo one. That's going to show you what every single one of these things are. This one here, Donna, animal, we're just going to do this. 
Um, let's just take this uh, and uh, animal crystal. Can make a crystal and fox for yeah. me? Yeah. Um, I think I'm supposed to like upload an image. So I think I can do something like this. Um, let me get this. Let's just see what this is here. I'm just going to take this. I can even copy the link address, but I'm just going to save as. We'll do one last demo here. I heard it beep, but I wanted to. Okay, so look at this, Donna. This, there we go. That one's a little wonky, but th th some of these are a little better. Like this one right here is pretty good. Yeah. So I could upscale that. But I, again, I told it a type of art style. So what's nice is you can start with the prompt, make it realistic, and then convert that to any one of those styles that we gave you. So let's do one last one. I said that we were going to do um, this. And that really is the <clears throat> secret to getting the images that you want. It is multiple iterations. You, you work towards getting the right image rather than trying to create the perfect prompt to give you the right image. It's, it's actually about following the steps and making slow incremental changes to get the right image. So all I did is drag an image here. Now I can open link. I mean, copy link, and I could use this like this. And I'm going to now say, imagine, oops, slash imagine. That's what we're having the problem. So imagine this image, comma, animal crystal. Well, I don't know if I just put animal crystal like that and blend with art. Let, let's just see what, uh, I'm gonna put lion animal crystal. Lion crystal? Lion animal? I'm just gonna lion crystal. I guess I could take out the, the, the this here. I know this creates a pretty, <clears throat> oh, and blend with art, Never mind. Yeah, this. I think it's a blend it's prompt, it's right? A blend, yeah, okay. So I have to do a blend um, with, this image. Oops, what the heck happened? This image into here. And then I think I just do animal crystal. Yeah, oh, maybe, I, maybe, maybe I search for animal crystal. Maybe that it's a blend. Um, so let's just do um, what is the name of that? Uh, Swarovski? Swarovski. Don't ask yeah. me how to spell it. I'm off uh, camera over here. Okay. Um, uh, so this is not working very, very well. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to leave it up. Maybe you don't have to do it. I think you need one. Let's just see. Uh, uh, lion animal, lion crystal. Oh, it definitely needs the, the second image. So I'm going to just try it uh, the original way. Let's get rid of this prompt. And exit this prompt. It's not letting. Okay, there we go. So we'll just do, this will be the final one, folks. Uh, image prompt. We're going to take this link. Copy link. Uh, we're going to paste it in there. Copy link. Paste. Okay. And then we're just going to say with... Um, uh, Swarsky spelled this way, comma Swarsky crystal. C R Y S T A L art. Let's just see what happens. No idea if we're gonna get this right, but if I've got this right, this this should create something pretty beautiful right here. And while that's happening, uh, folks, here's a video on how to use AI to create thumbnails for YouTube, a little sophisticated, how to train your face. Again, I, I, I will upload this doc on so you can see what all of these styles are. I might even just put a screenshot of every one of these styles from the video so that you can see it without mm -hmm. having to go through. And even this one was in there. I just forget 
you know, basically how it works. I think I've got something coming here. So this is a pretty cool, this is a pretty cool workflow. It's hundred percent done. Let's do it at hundred percent. All right. So what you're supposed to do is actually upload an image that's psychedelic without an animal uh, and then, then give a prompt. But this, this does some pretty cool stuff. It, uh, you know, so, you know, I don't know that I've sold Donna yet, but I think Donna will admit this. And, but I, I can't speak for her, but let me ask her this. Um, Donna, would you say that you would entrust a person that has really figured this out if they were on the team to use AI art with your instructions uh, to generate images? If they, obviously, people like Matt Wolf that are a little bit better at it than me. I haven't really figured out the dials. I, I, I yes, I think the answer to that is yes. I'm, I am. If they figured it out, of course, yes. Yeah. If they figured yeah. it out, yeah. <laughs> did you learn something today? Did, did, did some of this stuff come out a little bit? You know, um, a, a little bit like, hey, I was surprised that it could it could do something like that. Uh, you know, with with just a prompt. Yeah. Well, not learn um, that you know that we were able to to make it. You know, with simple prompts once we knew the prompts. Yeah, I'm I'm very impressed with AI's ability to do things like change what camera is being used, like and take take specific elements or functions of uh, artistic styles, various cameras, various aspect ratios, and filters, and apply them to your ideas. I think that that's super powerful. Absolutely, and so look, folks, this is a five day Groovathon, right? We've got to teach you tomorrow how you can do video. And we're also going to talk about voice to text and text to voice. Did we fill six hours with that stuff? I even said, I said, look, Donna, it's only 2.44. Doesn't it feel like five o'clock? It feels like 6.30. Yeah. It, it, so so uh, I, I knew that today would be like this. And I, I even said, hey, guys, let's let's be prepared for us to get out of here by 3, 3.30 instead of five o'clock. Do you mm -hmm. want to see me stretch this out? No. Are we kind, we kind of, can we get back to more content tomorrow? Certainly. I kind of sense this. Be prepared for maybe that throughout the week as well with the, with the video, the images. Unless we've got some things where we say, show me this with the content. Uh, I think like there's an expression in comedy, you're losing the crowd, right? Uh, and I think it's the same thing that can happen here. I kind of felt in the last 20 minutes that some of you, if I were you, I probably would have been multitasking and popping back in if you heard, oh, this is great. But, you know, mm -hmm. look, we're getting some good feedback here. You know, uh, Gilmar, thank you, says uh, great stuff, always learning. What was the highlight of the day? If you ask me, it's this document right here. It's your playground. You've got all the information now that you could go in, link to different YouTube videos. You kind of understand what is in-painting, what is out-painting. Um, model posing, all of these different things. I'm not an expert. I've list, linked the videos that made me say, wow, did I spend an hour learning mm -hmm. it so I could make a YouTube video like Matt Wolf did? No, but why should I? Here's the link to, to the video. To, link to, to Matt Wolf, that, right? Exactly. <laughs> Len Thompson says, uh, definitely, definitely multitasking. Look, yeah. I get it. Um, Mike, you need a break. You need a real yeah. break. You've been going for four hours. Let's take that full, long, extended, leisurely 10-minute break and let you go pee and get some water and warm up your coffee and eat. <laughs> Too Too much, 10 minutes. Let's, let's do that. And when we come back, we are going to simply do a workflow for Audacity, which is a free app mm -hmm. that's going to show you how you can take audio and sweeten it. So here's what I'm going to ask Donna to do. In, uh, and I know, Donna, you've got 10 minutes to use your time. But if you could get me, I'm curious how it's going to sound with a female voice. So if you could get me an audio, even if it's a video, something on YouTube, anything, I will rip it down, detach the audio. It'll be a great process. And I'm going to show you. Um, I, I'm, unfortunately, I'm going to have to put the link on Dropbox for everybody to hear, right? Because I can't play the sound through my computer. But we'll post the before and after audio for everybody to hear uh, how it sounds. So guys, we're gonna be back in 10 minutes. See you real soon. Hi, it's Mike Vilsames AI Avatar. Thanks for tuning in to our Groovathon. We hope you're enjoying all of the great AI content we're serving up for you. But before we get back to the show, we've got a quick message about the Groove.ai backup project. So let me ask you this. Are you sick and tired of spending countless hours creating content for your website, social media, and email marketing campaigns? 
Do you struggle with writer's block and finding the right words to express your ideas or blank page syndrome? Then you're going to love AI. It's the revolutionary tech that is in AI-powered content creation platforms that solve these problems and more. In fact, we used it for almost every content we used in this campaign, including the script for this video. But did you catch that problem? I said platforms. It's like this. Sadly, AI is becoming like streaming platforms. Remember when cutting the cord with cable companies was all the rage? Well, now there's a dozen streaming platforms and the cost can add up quickly. The same is happening with AI. There are a lot of great platforms out there, but the cost could be as high as $4,000 a month or more to do what we've been doing in this promotion. And trust me, we will make a hundred times the ROI. But why pay $4,000 a month when you could pay one time for AI and own it for life? Imagine this. What if you could have a lifetime deal on all of your streaming platforms for the price of just one month? Are you starting to see it? That's right. That's why we created Groove.ai. It's a backer project backed by people like you that later this year will provide you with the best AI solutions at a fraction of the cost. The question is not, will you be using AI? With Group.ai, you can create unlimited high quality engaging content in minutes, not hours. Whether you need headlines or great bullets, or website copy or funnel copy, landing page copy or webinar registration copy, or those email subject lines that get three times the open rates that you're getting right now. Or how about quality emails that get two times the click-through rates because they're not the same boring old emails. When it's easier, you're more productive. When it's better quality, you make more money. It's just like how we used AI in this campaign you're part of right now. We used it for our landing page, webinar registration page, copy on our replay page. And when we put AI generated copy underneath the webinar replay video, it doubled our conversions. In fact, we used AI to get you onto this live stream. AI was used to create the script for this video that you're watching right now. And AI was used on our checkout page to get more than 500 people to back this project. People just like you. But the content won't stop there. You'll be able to use it for blog posts, social media captions, product descriptions, email newsletters, reports, books, articles, you name it. Groove.ai will have you covered. Plus, it'll have advanced features like keyword tools and SEO tools. So what does this mean for you? It means you can finally focus on growing your business and serving your customers instead of being stuck at your desk, struggling to come up with the perfect words. AI is like a calculator for words. It's literally like having the assistance of an all-knowing being to help you with anything that you need. With Groove.ai, you'll have more time, more creativity, and more peace of mind. But here's the thing, we need your help to take this product to the next level. And by backing our project, you'll not only get early access to Groove.ai, but you'll also get lifetime access to the platform for a one-time price instead of paying annually or monthly. Sidebar, your honor, here's a fun fact. We did the same thing, a backer project for Groove.cm. When we did that project, we started with a lifetime offer of just $1,397. And that's $500 more than you're going to be paying here today. But we didn't stop there. We kept telling people we were going to raise the price. And we did to $1,497, then $1,997, then $2,497. And today, it costs $3,997 to get lifetime access to the Groove.cm account. And people pay for it every day because people like lifetime deals. They're great. But we warned everyone with Groove.cm that the price was going to be going up. But some people love the punishment of paying more. But not you. You realize that this is the lowest price we will ever offer. And since it's a lifetime deal, you're strongly considering doing what over 500 people have already done. So why not join them? Want to know a little bit more about Groove.ai? Sure. Let's take a closer look at some of the key features of Groove.ai. Our platform uses AI to create engaging, high converting copy in seconds. No more writer's block or endless hours copywriting. Let Groove.ai do all the heavy lifting for you. But that's just the beginning. With Groove.ai, you'll be able to create content at the speed of thought. When the software is released very soon, here are just some of the things you can do 10 times faster. Groove.ai features a chatbot assistant that integrates with ChatGPT. So it's not just a boring blog wizard. You're going to be able to craft it the way that you want. Let's not forget about our Chrome extension we're going to have. You can extend Groove.ai anywhere that you can type. Simply use the magic prompt and enter your wish. When you hit enter, Groove.ai will start typing whatever you requested wherever you requested it. This can be used to write copy anywhere for subject lines inside your marketing email builder in Gmail or to write a blog with Grooveblog or WordPress, product descriptions in Shopify or Groovecart, website and funnel copy bullets and so much more. It's literally Groove.ai content on the go. We will have a meeting and content summary. 
Just upload any audio or video and easily transcribe meetings or videos from multiple sources, including video conferencing apps like Zoom or any audio file you have. You can review a one hour meeting in just five minutes. With just one click, you can get access to your meetings, action items, tasks, questions, and other key metrics. You can get summaries and TLDRs at your fingertips. And weeks, months, or years later, you can search any text for any keyword from any meeting in your company with ease. But our most coveted feature is this. You'll be able to build landing pages and funnels in minutes with Groove.ai's magic website and funnel builder. That's right. It will build all of the pages. You simply tell Groove about your business and it will build all of the pages, all of the copy, all of the images, title tags, and optimize it for SEO. And you can even export those pages to Groove pages. So say goodbye to the need for web development, design experience, or even a copywriter. When you're done, export them to Groove pages in Groove.cm to edit, publish, and save. And check this out for your company support. You're gonna be able to train Groove.ai with your support articles from your current help desk. And then you can add a support AI widget to your site to do better support than even your best support agents. Yes, the future is here. And you're gonna be able to easily create high quality images and graphics for your campaign, saving you time and money on professional design services. You'll be able to quickly and easily generate high quality images and graphics for your campaigns without the need of a professional designer, saving you time and money. Better images increase conversion rates. So here's what makes Groove.ai different. First, it consolidates all those other good but expensive AI companies into one, saving you money. Second is that you can use your own free API key that you get from OpenAI and Google. Unlike companies like Jasper.ai and Copy.ai, Group.ai is not locked into only one AI company like OpenAI. Although OpenAI is the talk of the town right now with Dolly for images, Whisper for voice to text and text to voice, ChatGPT, but recently Google just announced their API and the AI wars are on, but we use them all. And this is gonna allow us to be more expansive and flexible than the competition while offering a no compromise solution, all at wholesale rates. You heard that right. With Group.ai, we don't charge you for AI Instead, you connect your free API with companies like Google, OpenAI, Stability.ai, and more. This means you don't pay monthly for AI you're not using. And since you're paying directly to the source and not us, you're saving three times to six times the retail markup compared to companies like Jasper.ai. The other guys charge you for monthly tokens even if you don't use them, and they don't offer rollover credits. Groove.ai can save you thousands per year compared to the other leading AI companies. And finally, what makes us different is Groove.ai is a marketplace. Yes, we're making a marketplace for other AI developers to create cool apps. Don't find the task or workflow for your needs? There's a marketplace where others are extending our platform with powerful AI tools. You've seen how marketplaces extend the value of technology with things like the Apple iPhone, Android, WordPress, Google Chrome, and Shopify. Groove.ai will allow AI developers to market their apps in our marketplace. The bottom line, that's better for you. But before we wrap up, we wanna make a special offer to you. We need your help. As a thank you for supporting us and backing our project, we're offering a special lifetime deal for Groove.ai. That means you can get access to our groundbreaking AI platform later this year for a one-time payment of just $897 or just two payments of $497 instead of paying the regular price of $99 a month or $997 annually. Oh, and here's something special for all paid or lifetime Groove.cm customers who back our project before we close you'll get a massive bonus of 3.75 million words of free AI content. That's the equivalent of getting 3,500 free emails with 1,000 words each, or the ability to create one 1,000 word email every single day for a decade. Don't miss out on this incredible bonus. Act fast and become a backer of Groove.ai today. But don't wait too long. The lifetime deal is only available for a limited time. Once we close this backer project, the lifetime deal will be gone forever. After that, it will cost $99 a month or $9.97 a year. So if you want to take advantage of this incredible opportunity and save big on your AI needs, become a backer of Groove.ai today before it's too late. Don't wait. Join the community of over 500 people that have already backed this project and be the first to experience the power of AI when it's released later this year. Go to Groove.ai forward slash backer right now. Groove.ai forward slash backer. So now let's get back to the AI Week Groovathon with the real Mike Filsame. Now get ready for the power, the power of Groove AI. Become a backer of Groove today. All right, all right, all right. We are. Can I do that? <laughs> Donna's shaking her head. I'm wondering if that was my voice. She's saying no. All right, everybody. 
We are at uh, three o'clock, just a couple of minutes before. And uh, I asked Donna to get me some audio. The one that she had on YouTube actually had music. So, you know, we don't want to do that. I needed just the audio track. Luckily, she said it was actually in Descript. So I quickly went into Descript and I found her project right here. And it was this one. And I right clicked duplicate. And then I put mic export just audio. So if you see in her file uh, here, if I actually let's just go to this and I click on hers. Why are we not able to just click on this one? Oh, there you go. You can see it had an audio track. So I made a copy. I just deleted the audio track. I went over here to publish. And then I clicked uh, export and I clicked audio only. And so it's, uh, it's exporting the audio for me right now. This is a cloud-based uh, editor. So we're just waiting for that uh, to show up. So uh, in the meantime, what, while we're waiting for that, and let me just um, go to my little finder window so I can make sure that when it's done, I can see it uh, load. So I'll probably go to my, I'm not even sure where it downloads that. So it could be documents, uh, but we'll see. I'll check in when... Um, when the script says that it's uh, done exporting the audio. Uh, okay, so it looks like it needed to download something from Donna here. So it's gonna be a little bit of time because it's gotta download this countdown from uh, 800. So it looks like it's about two, one, two to three minutes remaining, not bad. So in the meantime, I can uh, basically tell you where you could get uh, access to Audacity because uh, I'm gonna show you an Audacity workflow. So uh, what you want to do is you want to Google download Audacity, right? And right here, here at Audacity. And let's... Uh, I just want to let everyone know Audacity has been around forever. This was the very, very first program I ever used to edit audio back in like 2000 and... Or 93. No, 2003. And, it was right the first time. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, I never used to use it. And I hmm. never will use it except for this particular workflow because I saw a video on how to do it. And I said, oh, so if that's the video on how to do it, then I, I can do it. Because to me, it's the Photoshop of audio. This is the audio engineer's uh, product. I'm not saying it's not intuitive, but generally, you know, when I do something in ScreenFlow, I like presets that say studio sound. That's a, I'm not good with all the bass and trebles, but I have a little workflow. So I'm going to create a document for you right now. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go and download your version of Audacity. It always wants you to do an update every time you, you open it up. It's like, hey, there's a new version of Audacity. Shocking, and I just used it yesterday. I mean, it like never ends. So that's good. They're constantly improving it. So let me upload my Audacity as well uh, while that's happening. And then it's going to make me restart. And let's create a Google Doc for you that I can share with you all. So we're just gonna share this right out of the gate. Let's call this, um, oh, it's gonna tell me I have to quit Audacity in order to do this. All right, we're gonna go here, replace. Okay, let's go into my finder and eject that. Okay, so we're gonna call this, um, Audacity workflow to uh, radio voice. That's good for now. Right, we're going to share this as I'm making it with Donna. Okay. Pink, pink, pink. All right. Donna has this doc that we're working on. I'm literally gonna copy my little workflow right here. Now, every version of Audacity is a little bit different, uh, meaning the every time you update it, they start changing the user interface. It's a little bit of a pain in the neck. Let's drag this over right here and see, oh my goodness, look at that. Open, it's, it's good. Mic export audio. So I've got exactly what I need. So I'm going to close out the Descript and I'm going to simply, so the point is now, you have an audio file that you want to sweeten. That's all. Now, let me show you a little trick as well. Um, 
there's a way to, um, uh, you can Google YouTube Ripper, right? To MP4. So if you have an existing video on YouTube, <clears throat> these sites spam you with commercials and all that stuff. This one's out of business. Let's try this one. And what you can normally do is just paste in a YouTube link. So let's just go to YouTube and get a Tony Robbins. <clears throat> and this is only if you need to get audio down. So let's find a nice short video, two minutes. This is really cool. If you already have a video on YouTube and you're like, hey, I want to, you know, I just want to get that audio and sweeten it. Now, unfortunately, this one has uh, music, but for this example, not a big deal. I'm going to just paste uh, these things. All they want to do is, is spam you with ads. I'm going to click start. And then they made it make it like hard to actually find the video. But here we uh, here we have it. YouTube to MP4 converter. And I'm going to take this one right here and just download it. And this should open up a download on my computer. These things, like I said, all they want to do is every single thing is like an ad. It, forget it. I hate these stupid things. Uh, but anyway, once you get a, um, an, an audio track, what I'll normally do is I'll open up ScreenFlow. ScreenFlow is an app that I have, but you can do this you know, pretty much on, on uh, anything. So I'll open up a, a recent project. Let's just uh, open up this one right here, Avatar Pro. This was me probably creating, um, uh, creating my avatar. Now, what you can see here that I did is I detached the audio. And that's what I like to do. So normally, if, if these two were combined and you just saw all the audio tracks here, what you do is you right click and you click detach audio, which you can see I did. And then it pops the audio out automatically for you. And if I want to work just with the audio, I'll work with the audio. But again, this is a video editor software. And that's why I told you that like it only has like preset audio filters here that that are um, like this, these different things, but you can't really get all the dials tuned in properly. And so what I'll normally do is I'll just highlight this and you would do this in anything, uh, any, any iMovie, Final Cut, Premiere, whatever, and you'll do something like export. And what you'll have to do is automatic is with the video manual. Uh, I'll say, I just want the lossless audio. I don't need the video. I don't need anything like that. And I'll export and I'll get an audio file. But in this case, I don't have to do any of that to get an audio file out of the video. Again, what I was showing you was you can't import video into Audacity. So what I was showing you is that if you have a video, you go into a software and you click detach audio, and then you export just the audio file uh, without the video. Um, okay, so let's go back to uh, Audacity. And now this is the actual workflow. We're literally just gonna do this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give Donna let me, let me actually listen to it myself. Okay. I've got an audio file that I'm going to give a Dropbox link, link to Donna. This is the before. In fact, let me rename it to uh, before audio. Before Donna audio. Okay. And there we go. This is a WAV file. We're gonna uh, not drag it to Donna. We're gonna right click and share the link. So this is the before. Okay, now we're gonna make an after version of this. And I'm doing some things off my computer. That's why you're not seeing anything happen. All right, so we're gonna open up Audacity and bring it back to the main screen. And I'm gonna drag this file right into here, just like this, and it's gonna open the file. Now, what I gotta do is I've gotta find a place where I can remove the audio. So Let's see if at the beginning here, if Donna left me some room and I can um, zoom in with hitting these little keys. So zoom in is the one. And look at that at the beginning. <clears throat> the first step that we need to do is we need to do noise reduction. So uh, the first thing you do in the noise reduction is you highlight this section here. And then I'm going to go to effect noise removal and repair, noise reduction. And so the first thing is to get a noise profile of a sample. So this is my notes. So I'm gonna put in here, get noise 
profile of quiet room, no audio. So what I, what I basically am doing is I'm saying, hey, this is the room noise. This is the room noise, the fan that's going on in the background, the heater, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Quiet, Q -U that's why, Q-U-I-E-T. All right, you, so what I just did is I said, okay, this is when Donna's not talking and there might be a very soft going on in the background. So I wanna get that noise profile. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Control A or Command A, I select all. So I have to put that here. Then step two, select all. And then step three is apply to all. All right, and in order to do that, I now, right, we gotta make sure we hit control A. And when I get in here, I've got this little thing here that says repeat noise reduction. So I'm gonna put here repeat noise reduction to apply to all. all. Right, that's it. So that's done. So now I'm gonna just basically follow. I wanna do the compressor. So I, I always make sure you're highlighted. I simply go to effect. I go over here to uh, volume and compression. Most of my things that I need are in here. And I'm gonna go compressor, Brrr, apply, that's it. It applies a compressor. The next thing I need to do Mike, is, what does that do? What's a compressor? I don't know. Oh, okay. there's, a, there's videos on there's videos on YouTube that literally just tell you to do this. Okay. That's why I'm saying this is Photoshop. So I don't know the opacity that's happening and all yeah. this stuff. But there there are audio guys that will tell you, oh, you know, compressor condenser is gonna it's gonna give these little, you know, sounds maybe Tighten more of, sound of that to the voice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't I don't know what compressor normalize and limited limited limiter filter does. I don't know. Hmm. But I know that my next step is a limiter filter because a YouTuber told me. Again, I'll click out of it and hit control A again. I like to make sure that it's all selected. I go in again. The next thing that we're doing now is a limiter filter. So I'm going to click limiter apply. Okay. And then my next thing is this is the filter EQ manage factory presets base. Okay. I'm going to give it a base boost. Okay, these are my notes. So I normally don't have all of the stuff, but you know, since I'm going to be sharing this with you, let's uh, treble. I don't even know if that's uh, two Bs in trouble. Probably not. All right, so now we got to do the bass boost. So again, make sure we're all selected. Effects, equalizers and filters, filter EQ, click it, go to a factory preset, and ch click, on, click on the bass boost. Okay, and we click apply. If that looked a little complicated, that's, I literally said filter EQ, manage factory preset. We're gonna do the same thing for treble. So now I'm gonna go select all, go to my equalizers, my filter, my factory preset. I'm gonna go to, to the treble boost and we're gonna click apply and that's happening. All right, and now I've got one more and that's normalize. So make sure it's all selected back to the beginning one. We click normalize and we click apply. And most of the preset settings are fine. And guess what? When I'm done, I'm simply going to save this project because it always likes to know that you've saved something before you can export. I'm going to export it <coughs> as a WAV file. Always a WAV file, not an MP3. Wave, WAV has more information and it's a larger file. And it's a much better file than an MP3. MP3 was created to stream music over the internet without killing the internet and making sure that your MP3 players or your music players would not stop, you know, back in the days of dial-up and stuff like that or slow modems. Uh, so Wave is the file that you want. And so I'm going to rename this after Donna, right? And I'm going to listen to it. You can't. I'm going to give it to Donna in just a second. I don't even know where I sent that. I should have sent that to my uh, – I didn't send that to Dropbox. So let's see. Uh, yeah, let's drag that to my Dropbox folder and I've got the after Donna. Now I'm going to just copy that Dropbox link. It's uploading to Dropbox. So in the meantime, I'm just going to, um, I'm going to listen to it. Oh, wow. Donna. Oh my goodness. 
Oh my God. Holy cow. I will never make sure I will never be too lazy to say I'm sweetening audio again. Holy <laughs> I can't wait to hear this. Moly. Donna, I'm not kidding you. You're uh, if, if you don't give me a verbal, holy cow, please listen to number one first. Please listen to number one. I'm gonna put those two uh on the uh on the document as well, so that all we gotta do is basically share the document. So I'm gonna put the before. Wow. Right? Yeah. I mean, that really is a wow. Well. Yeah, it, it's a, it's three minutes to do it, you know. Um, so copy link. Uh, so let's do that. This one here as well. We don't need the plus uh, here. And this is the after. Because of the Rubathon, I am woefully behind on my uploading schedule and my YouTube channel. So month number two, I'm behind already <laughs> on getting my one video a month uploaded. Oh, I should have uploaded one yesterday. But now I'm glad I didn't because I can audio sweeten it. Wow. We did this in 13 minutes. That wasn't too bad. Not bad I, I just looked. I thought that was like a 40 minute thing. Uh, you know, um, uh, we don't need that. What I love about right. this is it's just a recipe. You don't have to know what you're that's doing. All, you don't have that's to know exactly why. It. Don't, don't know why. Download a free software. And so what, here's the important thing that you want to notice, right? So here's what you got to do. You've got to go back into your, your, your document that you were editing. And unfortunately, I got out of there. So let's just open it. So here's what needs to happen now, okay? This file was what you exported. You're going to now, and by the way, I didn't do it for this project, but this is essentially what it would look like. You then need to drag in the new file, mm -hmm. right? And I'm just going to pretend that this is the new file by deleting this, right? Okay. And then what you're going to have is a new file. And I can mute these by clicking mute and then listening and then muting this track and listening and saying, wow, there's a difference. But normally I could just go like this and listen to the beginning and then move this one and now listen to it and go, wow, just like Donna didn't say that's good. So what I'll do now is I will delete this, move this up, and now save my file. And what I'm left with is a, is a as Donna will tell you, uh, Donna, that was a wow factor to you. Right? It, it definitely <laughs> was. Um, and I had, when I did my first video, I had been looking in Descript for noise reduction because I did notice there was a bit of a fuzz on my audio. And I yeah. couldn't find it inside Descript. It was easy enough. And as long as you don't do any cutting in the audio, uh, as long as the audio size is the same exact size, it should resync with your mouth in the video very, very easily as well. Yeah, this is how you do audio in Descript. You simply take your text that's you know that you've edited and you hit Control A, Command A, whatever right there. And then you go to, I don't know why we've got a little thing here that's bothering me. That's a help center. Can we? Oh, what's new? Okay. It's, it's, that's what's highlighted, just what's new. So there's something okay, new. So, yeah. So, all right, good. Let's get yeah. rid of you. <laughs> uh, it's not going away, but let's see if I can click the, um, the audio effects. Oh, it is, it is on. So uh, there's studio sound uh, on there. And basically, you've already applied it. Uh, but basically, what happens is you, uh, if, if that wasn't here, you'd hit the plus button. And Donna, this 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 is really bad UI. I'm I'm like trying to move that. It's terrible. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, there. Okay, I got it. You would click plus. Okay, and right here it would say Studio Sound, but Donna already selected it, mm -hmm. and then you hit Studio Sound. So I I might even uh, and I told you Donna to move it to 75. So you did it. So what I gave you was sweetening up the studio version of the script mm -hmm. and taking it to another mm -hmm. level. And, you know, what would have to be done there in Descript, um, it, it would be a little complex, but it's, you would have to basically just pull that audio track in and delete the audio. The yeah, audio. yeah. Because what I noticed was that Descript did not remove the noise. It sweetened the audio for sure. Yeah. There was a little bit of bass boost. It sounded a little bit richer, almost like they added a wall of sound. You know, yeah. the, the, the audio was richer than the, than the original recording, but the fuzz was still there. The noise was still there. So yeah, look, look at in the future, I'll probably sweeten an audacity first. And then <clears throat> I should have had it like that the whole time for you guys. Uh, so here's what you guys were saying. Wow. The sound quality difference is amazing. 
All right. So you've got this document, you know, if you've got to go back and just, you know, watch, you know, the uh, what I would basically say is the four hour mark of this live stream. You've got that. It literally started at like 30, 307 mm -hmm. or something like that. Uh, Amanda says, wow, that's amazing. Radio quality. Love it. Um, man, the audio quality shot up dramatically. Very nice. Right. It's a quick little workflow. And here, awesome demonstration. Thanks so much for taking the extra time to share the audac or, uh, audacity workflow. I had the audacity to do that. What's really cool about that, guys, is this works for anything that you're doing. iMovie, Final Cut, Camtasia, um, DaVinci Resolve, or, um, or Premiere. Any, any of these things it'll work with. It's basically exporting the audio, bringing it to Audacity, sweetening it up, exporting, and then putting, and then replacing that in your in your file. So uh, yeah, you guys are just saying it sounds you know sounds much better. It literally blows me away. So we're gonna actually hear that, right? This is the Come same for the exact AI. microphone. Stay yeah. for the audio training. <laughs> yeah. So the the audio that you're hearing from me, where you hear. Uh, welcome to Groove.ai. We're going to be that. It's not me really putting on that much of an audio uh, radio voice. It's me a little bit in character talking like this when I'm reading. But then that that really cool sound comes from Audacity. So we're going to wrap it up today, folks, uh, an hour and 45 minutes early. Uh, so only for one reason and one reason only. So Donna can get back to her YouTube channel. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't have any excuse. I need to get that video done today. <laughs> No, we're all exhausted. And I know that you guys got some work to do. We're not going to stretch things out just because we said we're here till five. We're on an AI day. We've accomplished our mission on images. Over the next couple of days, we're going to be doing um, video, voice to text, text to voice, more chat GPT content creation. And then we're going to have a special guest on tomorrow. Felicia Pagish is going to come on and she's going to show us how to take any bit of content and then branch it out into 10 other pieces of content that you can repurpose. But I'm going to blow Felicia away with stuff that she's not even prepared with. I'm going to show her how you can now do that with chat GPT. Meaning if you have a video, you could take that transcript and then say, write this into a two page freemium report that is blah, 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 blah. So I'm gonna show her things that maybe she's never seen. It's gonna be really exciting stuff. We're also gonna have Matt Wolf, the guy who we get, keep giving you links where I'm learning a lot of this different stuff, mostly on the images. Um, He's going to be on there tomorrow as well. So we have two guests tomorrow. We're trying to get Rick Sheffrin. He's on a plane back from Europe. May or may not get him. I'm going to actually be teaching him how to use ChatGPT in his business. You guys love those things. That's fly in the wall sessions. And we're also going to have Sean Vossler from Jasper.ai. He's one of the best modern copywriters out there. He's going to show us how to do Sean's some stuff. on Friday. Sean's on Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Rich Sean maybe Friday show you. Yeah. And, and, oh, and we also got Mike Keenix coming Friday and Sean Vossler is going to, uh, you know, I said, Hey, if you want to come on, if I don't think it's a conflict of interest, we're not going to be out for a few months. He said, Mike, don't worry. We're actually, you know, we're, uh, Jasper is really going to be focusing on corporate and, uh, you know, we know there's plenty of room and he's like, there's nothing awkward that you're coming into the space. I'd love to be a guest. So, you know, we've been really, really polite to Jasper and, and copy.ai. We say they're amazing programs. Uh, we use them. We're doing a consolidation thing, uh, but they are great. And we're going to have Sean Vossler showing us some insider secrets. And who knows, maybe get a Jasper account until Groove.ai comes out if he shows you some cool things. And if you like it later and you like Groove in there, keep it. I have to at least give that much credit to them for coming onto our live stream. So that is it, guys. We're going to make it very, very easy for you. We are going to get out with a one minute image commercial of Groove.ai. We're going to see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. And then we're going to peace out and see you tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Really appreciate it. Bye-bye now. Hey there, it's Mike Fulsames, AI avatar. I hope you're enjoying the AI Week Groovathon. We're going to be here every day this week through Friday, streaming from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern, talking about all things AI with some awesome guests and workshops. But right now, it's time for a quick break. Don't worry, we'll be back soon. In the meantime, let me tell you about something exciting, our backer project for Groove.ai. By backing this project, you can get lifetime access to Groove.ai and never make a payment to us or anyone for almost all of your AI needs ever again. 
But hurry, this opportunity is expiring soon. So head on over to groove.ai forward slash backer to learn more and become a backer before time runs out. And here's something special for all paid or lifetime Groove.cm customers who back our project before we close. If that's you, you'll get a massive bonus of 3.75 million words of free AI content. That's equivalent of getting 3,500 emails with 1,000 words each. That's right. That's a 1,000 word email every day for a decade. Don't miss out on this incredible bonus. Act fast and become a backer of Groove.ai before midnight tonight. All right, that's it for now. Let's get back to the AI Week Groovathon. Ah! 